is an exciting moment for everyone. Because you can do the three, two, one. Three, two, one. We are live on YouTube (laughs) and welcome to the final week. You have made it till the end of the Extraordinary Life course. Thank you for joining us for... I'm just unmuting myself. The host <laughs> muted everyone, including the Donegans. Uh, so I've just unmuted myself. So Anita welcome. Anita looks really embarrassed. This is so smooth. <laughs> We're so professional. So here professional. At the, uh, Rebel team. <laughs> so welcome to the final week of the course. We're very excited to do this with you. And let's just get started straight away. If I say the word goal setting to you, what's your reaction? Like when you think of goal setting, when you think of goals, what comes to mind? Are you excited? Tracy writes smart, smart goals. Sandy writes buzzword. Andy writes messy. Yes, he did score a lot of goals. You are exactly right. Oh, very clever. Uh, Under pressure, says Catherine, when she thinks of goals. Claire goes, ooh. Tim goes, Tim from New Zealand says super important. Kristen says grown. Isn't it interesting we have such polarizing views of what the word goal means and what it triggers inside of us? Oh, Tim from Australia, not New Zealand. Tim, I apologize. You don't uh, want to get those too confused. I they do get not. very offended. So moving on quickly before I get myself in trouble. The word goal is polarizing. And I can understand why. I went on many self-development courses when I was younger and they always taught me to write goals and I would write down my goals. I'd explain what I wanted to do and then I would never deliver. And I just feel guilty. Have you ever set a goal and then just beaten yourself up for not delivering it? Because you're like, I'm not. Once a week. Do you, do you put that like it's a regular? Is it like a Tuesday morning at eleven thirty? Or is well, it- when I fail to hit my goals, why are we talking about me? Like, talk about someone else. Um, and for years, I had a goal when I first started my business to make a hundred thousand pounds. That was my goal. That's what I wanted. And year after year, I'd get to about April, and I was nowhere near it. And I'd give up and feel depressed, feel sad. It would take a couple of weeks to get over it. I just struggle doing it. And goals are these things that are polarizing and we get taught to do them at work. So many of the workshops that I've run over the years, people are like, oh, yeah, goals are things you do at work. They're not what you do in your own life. Um, And they've got sort of PTSD from work and being forced to do these goals. They just don't want to do it in their normal life. And they get so attached to this thing that like goals are bad and it's only something that I do at work and this happened that a lady came to our course and we're talking about goal setting and she's like I don't want to set any goals she was very like she was quite she was ag- angry ag- aggressive and angry about it. I don't want to set any goals all I want is a dinner with my family every night around a beautiful family kitchen table and have dinner with them every night it's like that's a goal like like you can think of it as a goal or a dream or a vision or something that you want to make happen it's just something you want to make happen it doesn't have to have this like corporate weird stuff around it it's just something you want to make happen yes Kristen Davis says work has ruined goals for her like let's try and reclaim this word because it's actually quite useful for us when do most people set goals is there a particular time of year is it in about a week and a half <laughs> Uh oh! Is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? I can't. Where are you going with this one today? Uh, it tends to be New Year. Everyone is saying New Year, um, and it's really interesting. Most people set them New Year's, and then uh, what happens next, Katie? Well, there's a day called National Quitters Day, which is when everyone has given up on their goals by. And do you know when that is? Can you guess how long into the year National Quitters Day is? Someone's Googling it now. Jan, 8th of Jan. 2nd of Jan. 31st of December. (laughs) 31st of December. I would be impressed if it was. before you set them. Oh, I thought they meant a whole year later. Yeah, it's 14th of Jan. Anyway, it is the 14th of Jan. It's National Quitters Day because that's the point at which most people have given up by. But what we want to say to you is it doesn't have to be a once a year thing. You are allowed to set goals today. Today is the 19th of December that if you're watching this course live, you're allowed to do it today. You're allowed to do it in April. You're allowed to do it in June. You don't have to wait till that once a year thing. And a goal is just a direction. 
It's just something to head towards. So you set a direction, you set a goal. It's just a way of heading. You decide on a first step, you take the action and you head towards it. You notice what's working and what's not. You refine the action. You check you still want to head in that direction. And then you let go if it's no longer right for you. And all a goal is, is a direction. But it's super useful for having that direction. But people seem to get really confused. And one of the things I wanted to say to you right at the start is having a goal doesn't mean something is wrong. And let me give you an example of that right now. Um, Katie. Hi. I'd like to work to improve our relationship. What's wrong with our relationship? What? Don't you love me anymore? Wait, what? No, we shouldn't do that. Has this happened to anyone before? Never. Uh, Never. You say, I want to improve something. (laughs) And just put his hand up. I don't know which way round it happened in that relationship, but I love how uh, Dan and Anita are always playing along. I can guess. But it's, it's really interesting. People take the fact that, oh, you want to improve things means things are bad now. You want A means you don't like the way things they are. And it doesn't mean that. It can but it doesn't have to mean that you're just setting a direction from where you are. Um, and someone wrote in the chat, Sandy, improvement implies things can be better than they are. Like everything can be improved. Nothing is perfect. Perfect doesn't exist. So by saying you want to grow, you want to improve, you want to change doesn't mean you're saying things are bad now. So I really that's a really hugely important frame for today. Saying that you want to do something doesn't mean what's happening right now is bad. And that is okay. This is a hugely important frame for what we're going to do straight away, because we're going to have a look at setting goals, ideas, and then making them happen straight away. The other fallacy that really comes from this, and we discussed this last week, is the I'll be happy when. So people set all of their intentions on their goal and they go, I will be happy when I start a business, when I get to financially independent, when X happens. And they think that when they hit financial independence, there will be unicorns and rainbows waiting for them. Or they think that when they get to their um, holiday on the beach it will be rainbows and unicorns the whole time or they think when they achieve their objective whatever it is life will be perfect and having traveled all around the world and done a lot of these things I can tell you one thing with absolute certainty when you achieve your goal you will still be you like that doesn't change So you hit financial independence and think everything will be cool. No, you're still you. You achieve a certain number. You do a certain amount of sales. Like if you were unhappy before, you'll be unhappy afterwards. If you were happy before, you'll be happy afterwards. Simon's unmuted himself. I don't know whether that's because he's got something to say or it was an error. (laughs) I, I muted myself so I could cough. And then I unmuted myself so that I could speak. But thank you for drawing attention to that. I I was just going to add about the uh, the. I'm not pinning my well-being on the delivery of this final outcome, whatever it is. I'm pinning my well-being on a feeling of calm and being present in the moment. And I was just interested in your view because it's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? It's like set a goal and that's the thing that drives you know uh, you in a certain direction, but, but not be tied to the outcome. And, and I think that's the, and I just wondered how you guys think about the distinction between setting a goal and at what point you let go of the fact of being tied to it. See what I mean? Most, like, a lot of goals aren't within your control. Because you can set a goal to be financially independent, but a lot of that reply relies on your investments going up and down in the market. You can set a goal to sell so much for your business, but that relies on other people saying yes. Um, a weight goal, like a health goal, losing weight or changing your body fat, is more within your control. But for Katie and I, what we've come to is you set the goal and then you kind of let go of the outcome and do the daily activity. And you just get excited about doing the activity. And then you kind of go, okay, how far have we got? How's it going? 
And if we don't quite hit it, doesn't matter. And if we do hit it, that's fine. It's like setting a goal to lose 10 kilos and then you lose 9.8 kilos in the time frame you've set it. Are you a failure? Well, it depends if you've lost 10 kilos faster than me. He said, <laughs> like, like it makes me want to talk about pineapples. I think you're going to talk about pineapples, aren't you? Well, this brings us on to stop comparing. You have to be so conscious of this because we're trained to do it all our lives is comparison, comparing yourself with other people, comparing your progress with other people, comparing your goals with other people, comparing your pineapples with other people. It is not helpful. Um, So when you're doing this and thinking about what you want your life to be like, this is unique to you. There's no point comparing with anyone else and thinking, oh, their goal is better than my goal. No, like do what you want to do and doesn't matter what everyone else is doing uh i remember one running a workshop and uh there was a guy sat in the front row who owned a company in america that was worth one billion dollars and he was there with his notebook he was taking notes at my presentation and i was thinking you should be running the presentation and i should be taking notes from you uh But it was interesting. He said to me afterwards, and he actually said, my mission isn't as grand as yours. And I caught myself thinking, you have an incredible mission. You're supporting all these families. You have this amazing business. You're doing all these things. But he was comparing to what I was doing. And comparison is the thief of joy. It will suck the joy out of your goals, out of what you're doing. It will destroy your ability to find pleasure in what you're doing. We just need to stop comparing and run our own race, doing our own thing and working on what we're doing. That's it. So if we can stay focused on those goals, that is the challenge. That's what we need to do. And it's all about choosing a conscious direction and then heading that way, and then seeing, am I making progress on my goals, not looking around, going, who else is doing what? So all of this being said, the first thing we're going to do today uh, is I want to share with you the goal-setting process that I have been refining for the last 10 years. Uh, I've done this for myself so many times. I've run it at different workshops. I ran it at the Rebel Team Retreat with Simon and the gang in January. Uh, It's been hugely powerful for me making progress, and it's my gift to you. I would like you to play along. So do you have a pen and a paper? Do you have a piece of paper? Do you have a pen? Do you have a phone you can make notes in if you're high tech? Uh, a computer it's people better, are saying yes it's better done on pen and paper if you can if you want to do it on your phone your laptop that's cool but if you have pen and paper that works best exactly uh and Kate and I have been doing the goal setting process this last week to get ready for the course as well um so here we go I'd like you to have a go we won't finish the entire goal setting process in this session the idea is just to have a go and get some way through it so that you've experienced it and then you can go and finish it at home and you've got that experience to know what we're going to do. So step one of the whole goal setting process is number one, what are five things you're proud of? What are five things you're proud of? Doesn't have to be big. It can be small. It can be big. It can be anything you want. You could look at the person next to you and go, I'm proud of being with them. Uh, You could go, I'm proud of my Christmas tree. You could go, I'm proud of turning up every week to the Extraordinary Life course. I've been working on my life. I've been putting in the time. I've been doing it. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be a small thing. The key is to get yourself in a mindset of, I've actually already done some stuff that's pretty cool. I've already done some things. I've already like, I feel good. I've already done some things and it's okay. I'm proud of whatever it is. So I'd love to know, what are you proud of? What are five things you're proud of? Can I give you my list while people type things in the chat? I love that. I'm playing along in real time here. 
Yeah, um, Teresa says a thing or a quality or a value. It, Teresa, it can be, absolutely be a quality. So you could be proud of the fact that you're true to your word. You could be proud of the fact that you've been confident. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. Simon, what are yours? Oh, I just found myself comparing pineapples. Sarah Spinarella says doing a pull up is what she's proud of. Like, damn it, I'm struggling Don't with Sarah. that at the moment. <laughs> I've done my rotator cuff, so I can't do that. Uh, I'm not sure if I if I could do it anyway if I hadn't damaged my shoulder, but let's not go there. So I've got my children steering the business through COVID uh, and this course. I'm really proud of this course. I think it's been really cool. Um, uh, what, uh, what Rebel has achieved and continues to achieve. And uh, uh, I've been cooking healthy over the last couple of weeks. That's right, everybody. I made a dal. That's the information that you needed tonight. I learned what lentils do, which is really lentils are so really good for weight loss. I love lentils. Yes, uh, and there's been some great ones in the chat. Uh, Sandy lost one and a half percent of body fat, which is Ooh, unbelievable. Yeah. You should definitely be proud. Tracy was crowned Queen of Sudbury Christmas. Christmas lights. Kelly second says, year in a row. Second year in a row. Kelly says being a mum proud i love that but it's just to start to think like what am i proud of and this is part of setting a goal doesn't mean something's wrong now i'm already enough i'm proud of what i've done it's okay and i can head confidently in this direction to do some more cool stuff if i want to because that's what it's all about simon you're smiling i'm smiling because there's quite a lot of love for the dolls that have come in Uh, (laughs) There are people telling me where to go to get them. Adele's had dull tonight. Portia knows where to go get the best one. Just talk amongst yourselves, guys. I'm going to talk about curry for the rest of tonight. You carry on. I'm going to move us on quickly before you take us down dull road. So I love that you put this in the chat. And also, this is something you want to jot down in your notebook as well to make it part of doing the exercise as well. And this second step might seem like a big one. We're not going to complete it now. But I'd like you to start to have a go and an experience and we'll explain what happens. There's lots to talk about. But the second part to this is to write down 50 plus ideas. 50 plus ideas for goals. Meaning at least 50. At least 50. More than 50. Um, So it's just ideas. And what we're talking about is like it could be small to large. So it could be get out of debt. It could be invest my first hundred pounds. It could be get to financial independence. It could be grow a business. It could be, it could be anything. It could be small to large. It could be, I want a new set of headphones. It could be, I want to have a fancy breakfast out with my wife. Like it doesn't have, there's no judgment here. It doesn't have to be worthy. It's about the volume of ideas that you've got And it definitely doesn't have to be a worthy goal because lots of people get stuck on the word goal and go, I must have important goals and I must do important things. And you don't have to. You can do whatever you want to do, whatever it is. It might be I want to. I don't know. What are other examples, Katie, of small goals? Go on a walk in the park with my friends at the weekend. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and it's those small things. Laurie says writing the goals feels like a commitment. Laurie, you are this not is, committing at this, this stage. Is ideas. This is ideas. Katie and I had a big fallout in Brazil over its exact point when we were doing this because Katie was writing <laughs> Why down. Why does have to say where we were? It just sounds like, oh, by the way, we're in Brazil. It's, it's like you've been kicked that... out of the country for it. The Brazilian authorities overheard the argument and decided that you had to move to Argentina for two weeks. Yeah, it was such a tough life. That's how I file my arguments. Anyway, <laughs> I remember by that. location. Um, <laughs> stop. <laughs> uh, Katie felt like by writing down these 50 plus ideas, she was committing to do all of them. And then she felt resistance to doing the exercise. She didn't want to choose. It all melted down. And what I wanted to say to you is you're not committing to do them. These are just ideas at the moment. I think just it's happens in business all the time is where, you know, not just in personal goal setting, businesses try and come up with ideas and try and go straight to the right answer in one step. Like trust the process. And like just as we've been chatting, I've scribbled down 10 different ideas now. And it's just about a numbers game, isn't it, to begin with? It's just about whatever's front of mind, big stuff, small stuff, medium-sized, it doesn't matter. I've written down things like 
have a nice breakfast on Christmas morning. I want to go and see Top Gun for the third time, but this time in 4DX because I've Ooh. only seen it in 3D so far. I feel like I need the seat to move, you know, <laughs> drop 15 kilos and take my boys away. Like I've written just a few. And I think when people see the number, they go, ah, my goodness, I'm never going to deliver 50 goals where you don't have to. It's just about an idea generation process. Do you remember before we talked about the convergent list, the convergent thinking, meaning coming up with lots and lots and lots of ideas, and then you can do the divergent stuff, whereas you choose a few that you're going to do, and that's what this process is going to do. So you're absolutely right. It's like volume of ideas for now. You're not committed to doing any of them. And uh, sorry, I thought that in Brazil. (laughs) It's part of life. Uh, Dinner at home is an acceptable answer. Uh, Some of the ways we think about it are... Who would you like to spend time with? When would you like to do things? Where would you like to go? What would you like to own? What would you like to be? Those questions at the start can actually help you come up with lots of ideas. And if the ideas aren't flowing, it's very easy to get online inspiration. And uh, just yesterday we were sat working out our goals and we Googled uh, bucket list ideas. And people have created incredible lists of ideas if you want to have them. Uh, Gary wrote, go to Argentina with my kids, which I love. This is not the time for the realist. This is not the time for the critic. Uh, Katie is smiling because I actually fell into this trap when we did it yesterday. As I started to write the goals, one of my goals was to build a Lego city. And the first thing my head did was, you don't have a house to build it in. How are you going to build it? And what have I just done? Gone into the realist mode. I'm going to rent you out to Lego, Alan. (laughs) I'm going to rent you out for the day and then you can go and build as much Lego as you like with someone else's Lego. You don't need a house. Thank you very much. You said that you're also judging them as you wrote them down as well, going, oh, that's not a big enough goal. Exactly. And like I got into that phase and I had to get myself out of that phase so I talked to my little self uh, and moved on and the idea is to focus on the dreamer phase that's the idea what's the dreamer phase mean the dreamer phase is just like dreaming what's the possibility you remove the critic you remove the realist and you dream what's possible like Nisa wrote go to Thailand for massage I love that um it's just whatever it is Kelly's got a whole Pinterest board with her bucket list ideas it's just the ideas. So you can find ideas online. There's like these articles that are a thousand things to do before you die. It's just inspiration. You look through them and go, I don't want to do any of those. Or actually, there's one good idea or there's not. Um, and it's just finding a list of possibilities for you. You're not committing to do this. They're just possibilities. Write down all the ideas before choosing And then we're going to choose afterwards. So don't edit, just write the ideas. That's the key. First, the ideas. Second, we choose want to uh, what we want to actually do with these. So that's what I like. We want to actually get an experience of this. So I'd love to know, uh, Malcolm, how many have you written so far? Have you done five, 10, 17? Zero. Zero so far, Malcolm. I told him to get going yet. Well, no, now's your time okay, to get go. going. <laughs> Leo wrote 17, 10 points for you. Philippe, 21. Up. Annie, 13. Also, this is not an op- opportunity to compare your pineapples with everyone else's and think, oh, I haven't written as many goals as... There's lots of these Malcolm. pineapple trapdoors, Katie. They're all over the place, <laughs> these trapdoors. Aren't they? I, thought, I almost hey. fell down a couple. Um, get out Alice your... is high-performing. Alice has written 62, 62 times. <laughs> I guess like the thing for me that jumped out of this is that I, I don't know, there might be some people on the, on the call and I've certainly been here over the years on and off of when, you know, when you can't think of anything, you go like, I just don't, just can't think of anything that I actually want to do. It's usually a sign that you might be in a bit of a pickle and instead of annoying yourself and going, I can't think of anything that must mean dot, dot, dot. To me, that's a, that's pointing to self-care and self-love, the stuff that we talked about previously. So if you haven't, if you go like there's literally nothing I want to do next year, there's a good chance that you're not looking after yourself or being kind to yourself. So maybe a couple of the things that could go on that list is to do with your sleep, is to do with 
water and diet and exercise. Maybe there's some things that you could pick off there and pop in as, as some small goals to begin with. But look, I just want you to have as much fun with this as you can. I had another thought. Um, you could use the life areas as prompts if you're feeling stuck. So what do you want to do in the area of finances? What do you want to do in the area of learning, of family, of friends, of connection, of um, health and well-being, of career, of your business? That's one way that I do sometimes of thinking, oh, I haven't even thought about what I want in that area of my life. So who Love would it. you like to hang out with next year? Where would you like to go? Uh, talking about a where goal, one of mine at the top was stay in the uh, New York Avengers Hotel in Disneyland Paris. That was one of my new goals. Uh, Are you place dropping again? Not really. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Anita, stop nodding. Don't be ganging up on me now. I'm going to go back. I was judging to... your goal then. I do, but that was a big no-no, everyone. Don't do that. Don't judge another person's pineapple. Is that technically lobbing your pineapple at someone else's pineapple? <laughs> I think it was. Pineapple. It's like, look, I, I have a very large... Either, right? Naughty Katie. So this is the point at which you should have your notebooks out. You should be scribbling away furiously, thinking what you want to have, do, be, who you want to meet, what do you want to learn, what do you want to learn over the next three, five, ten years? Um, who do you want to help? Are there people in your life you want to spend more time with? Do you want to go on a trip with someone in your life? Uh, Tony says, I want to do one of those retreats with Misty Money Mustache. I love that. Uh, Ayana says, my daughter wants me to take her to Disneyland in Paris. I love that. And this is something you could do with your kids. This is something you can do. You could get your kids to come up with ideas and help make them real. You can do it with your partner. You can do it with different people. Alice has put a very selfless one, help the homeless. Uh, I had one on my list, which was take uh, someone who's homeless for lunch. I've never done that. It'd be the most random thing ever, but I'm, yeah, I haven't committed to doing that one yet. It's on my list of possibilities. It makes me nervous. Uh, is so it outside your comfort zone? It though? is outside my comfort zone, which now you're going to tell me that's why I have to do it. Um, yes. So let's keep going. As long as you've got a couple to play with to start with, let's keep going. And I just want to say to you, this is our favourite side, uh, trust the process. You see what we did there? Tracy's not laughing. She should be. Look at that graphic. Everyone it's amazing. Laughs immediately. Just put it on loop. It's trust the process. Uh, we will get to a place where you're excited about one of the things on your list to go forwards on that. Um, Steph said it was great. Thank you. So the next step, we're going to skip to the next step. We'll set the rest of this for homework. So you probably haven't come up with 50 ideas yet, except for... Uh, Alice, was it Alice? Alice, who said she got 62. Um, the next part of the process is just to put a time frame against it. So it might be one year. Is it, is it a one-year goal? Are you going to do it in 2023? Is it a three-year thing? Like, is it a bit further off? Is it a five-year one or is it a 10-year one? Maybe it's financial independence and it's like, well, that's a 10-year goal. Um, or actually, sometimes I use these time frames to go... I don't actually want to do that yet. So I'm going to set it as a three-year goal, even though I could do it in one year, and that's okay. So this is just to give you an idea of like, oh, where are you seeing this in time? And someone wrote this I, earlier, a goal is a dream with a time frame. And that's the whole idea is to like, let's think about when we actually want to do this stuff and make it real. So if you could do this right now, the ones you've come up with, put one, three, five or ten, a number of years against it so that you can start to have an idea of where your focus will go. So do this right now with us. Um, I love how focused everyone looks. It just makes me very happy. Catherine Ledger is deep in thought. Well, she was until you distracted her. I know. <laughs> now she's shaking her head going, leave me alone, Alan. Uh, so it's the time frames to put against them also Ruth said she liked our graphic from just now as well I love that thank you Ruth on YouTube 
Uh, Karen is saying all of hers are 2023. That's high achieving. You want to do everything now. That's the other danger with this process is you write everything and you want to do it all immediately. So for those of you who are putting all one years, I just want to say to you, you can do everything, just not all at once. So there needs to be a little bit of selection, which we will go through in a second. Uh, Eve says what's meant by trust the process. Uh, Eve, just follow along, write the 135, follow the process and just trust us. We'll get you to a good point by the end of it. That's all it means. Um, Bishoy says, can it only be those time frames or anything in between? Yep, absolutely. Whatever you want, Bishoy. Uh, it's just like useful uh, distances. So it's not too many. Uh, and then we're going to take a pause there. And step four in the full process is you would choose your top four one year goals, your top four. Meaning anything that you've put a one against, choose four of them. Exactly. Now, I realized like we've not done all the 50 goals. We've not done all the time frames. We don't have time to do everything right now. So just for the sake of this, can you just pick one? Pick one that excites you. One goal that excites you. That's the thing. That's the one you want to uh, go for. Is there a right answer, Alan? Am I going to be graded on this? There is no right answer. <laughs> it can be anything you want. And here's a couple of frames to help you choose. Uh, and all it means is like a ways of helping you to choose. Some are putting them on the list now, which I love. Teach my six-year-old baking and cooking, says Rob. I love that. Go swimming once a week. 100 push-ups in one go. Wow. Uh, so the frames are, it might be look down the list and what's the no-brainer? Like, this is the thing I should do. It's obvious. Like, look down the list and go, what's the thing? Oh, yeah, that's the one. Or it might be, what's the thing just for you? If you're someone, there was a few people in the chat, I think Janet put in the Facebook group, she always chooses the goals for other people, not for herself. If this is you, the selfless person that always does everything for everyone else, pick something just for you. So the frame is, what's just for me? Like, this is a goal I want. I have Alan, Katie and Simon's permission to be selfish. This is a goal for me. I love this. A friend of ours is doing a wine course to learn about wines. And she's like, this is just for me. I love it. She's got a kid. She's very busy at work. And she's like, I've chosen something for me that will bring me joy and make me happy. And I love that. <laughs> just her life, her family life will be better because she is happier. Uh, the next one might be, what's the moonshot? And by moonshot, we mean... Uh, if you shoot for the moon, you might fall in the stars. Like, what's the big thing you it could might, go for? It feels like grand and wow and like massive. scary. It's big. It's like the big thing. And you're thinking, oh, that's like, I'd never be able to do that. But maybe, but maybe. The key here is uh, they didn't know they could make it to the moon when they chose to fly to the moon. They just decided on the goal and then made it up afterwards. So you don't have to know how yet. So maybe it's a moonshot. Maybe it's a quick win. You look down the list and you go, actually, that thing, like I've needed a new fridge for ages. My goal is to have a new fridge. That's a quick win. I could do that straight away or whatever it is. Um, what is the quick win that can get you going? Or in my case, it might be, what's the thing that's outside your comfort zone? Like the thing that's going to challenge you slightly, might stretch you slightly, might like get you a little bit further outside your comfort zone and towards where you want to get to. Uh, a frame that I use quite regularly, I borrow Simon. He doesn't even know I'm doing this. Uh, but when I do my goal <laughs> setting exercise, creepy. it does sound a bit creepy. Can I bill uh, you for I, uh, <laughs> You can't bill me for it. Virtual consulting. Um, I asked the question, what would Simon tell me to do? If Simon was looking down my list, what would Simon tell me to do? It actually helps me to get outside of myself and have a different perspective. So pick someone that you admire, you trust. Do you admire Simon? Um, don't tell him. <laughs> Anita, you might go, what might Dan tell me to do? Or maybe you don't care maybe what he thinks, maybe pick someone else. <laughs> um, but pick someone 
What would they tell you to do? And then the final one, what's the wild card? What's the crazy thing? What's the thing that's not, you know, it's out there, but you're like excited about it, but you don't know what's the the wild card. So that'll give you an idea of like some different ways to think about picking your top four. So hopefully for now you've picked one. All I need you to do for now is to pick one so that we can go on to the next step. Uh, Please nod or press Y in the chat if you have one. Okay, Paula is the only person who nodded. We've got lots of whys in the chat. Okay, I suppose we didn't ask for a no if they didn't. (laughs) This is confirmation bias. Confirmation bias. Ruth Berman says yes on YouTube, so we're all good. Thank you. Favorite questions: Is it yes or is it definitely yes? Those are your two options. That's all (laughs) we've got. Um, If you don't have one yet, just relax. You've got plenty of time to do the full exercise afterwards. Just pick anything as a practice example to see how you feel about it. So the next step is to come up with your why. Why do you want to do this? Why are you doing this? And it's really important. We talked about juiciness uh, a couple of weeks ago when it came to asking juicy questions, things that get you excited. Your why needs to be really juicy to get you to do things because with a big enough why, any how is possible. So use emotive language on this like the reason that I want to lose five percent body fat is because I'll have so much more vitality in my life I will be um have so much more energy and be able to achieve all my other goals more quickly I'll be able to feel much more confident in my body just needs to be really juicy language that you use not just like oh like I don't look that good when I'm naked so I want to lose a bit of body fat it needs to be something that juices you and uh we should have a juiceometer but we've got a spiceometer on the slide how like spicy that. is your goal but we should have a juiceometer how juicy is your why um and if it doesn't feel juicy you're allowed to like make it juicier by doing what i said by using the more emotive language or by thinking what are the consequences if i don't do this where would my life be if i didn't do it and then frame it in the positive way once you've thought about that uh, Dorota says looking good naked is juicy. Uh, let's move on quickly. I um, wish I'd chosen a different example. Yes. <laughs> and well, Paul I, think says, I think it's going in exactly the right direction. I absolutely love where it's gone. Paul said, how excited are you about the goal? And that's exactly it. This is finding your excitement for it. So why do you want to do it? Rebecca says, pick one. What One of the goals, Rebecca. Any one. Pick one of the goals that you want to first focus on. The full process, you would write 50 ideas plus and then pick your top four. And then for each of your top four, you would write a paragraph of why you want to do it, because it's the why that is the driving force. It's the juice behind it. The second step after why is to write down the answer to who do I have to become to make this possible? And this is partly to do with the identity bit from week three. Like, who do you need to become? If your goal, I know one of Anita's goal was to build her business. So if I want to build my business, who do I need to become to build that business? And when I was doing this exercise, my answer was, I need to become a world-class marketeer. That's who I need to become to be able to sell what I'm doing and focus on it. And maybe it's losing weight. Who do I need to become? I need to become someone who understands diet. I need to become someone uh, who is excited about exercise and I can develop that identity. Adele says I need to become organized. Adele also going back to the why question this is an interesting example she said I've got a mental block on doing my tax return how do I turn I'll get into trouble if I don't do it into a juicy why you could focus on the positive and how you would feel afterwards like I feel such a sense of relief knowing that I've done what I needed to do to get my finances straight and to have filled in the return something like that I know my numbers I'm excited about what I do I know how much tax I pay I'm good at the finances like there's so much joy that can come out of being on top of those things and getting forwards I think quite often we only focus on what could go wrong if we don't do it Uh, so step six is 
who do you have to become to achieve that goal? Then seven, for the one goal you've picked, and you would actually do this for all four in the uh, full process, but for the one goal you've picked for now, what's the next action? What do you need to do to make it real? What's the very first thing you need to do? Because this is how you actually make things real, is go from idea to action. What can you do right now? Who do you need to email? What do you need to book? Who do you need to speak to? What do you need to eat? What do you need to drink? What do you need to research? Don't spend too long in the research phase. Maybe you need to Google, like for Adele with the tax return, like what are the rules about tax returns? Maybe it's a like a quick Google that is the next action to unlock you for the next bit. Lee says weigh himself. I love that. Do you have scales, Lee? Do it now. If you've got scales, go into the bathroom and weigh yourself now. Uh, if you don't have scales. Uh, Said yes. He's got them. Go. Please either go. turn your camera off or remain fully clothed. Wow. Awesome. Um, okay. Uh, Charlie's written one. We'll have a look at you. Charlie. We'll have a look at your comment in a second. Um, the key is to take a goal and go to action. What can you actually do to make it real? Uh, and then this sort of comes on to never leave the scene of a decision without taking an action. Never leave the scene of a decision without taking an action. So Lee uh, was saying about the scales, and that's the starting step. Like, if we're committed, let's take the first action. Weigh ourselves, send the first email, make the phone call, pick up your phone, send the email, uh, tell your partner about it. Like, never, ever leave the scene of deciding to do something without taking the first action towards it, because that is a vote for your identity as someone who makes something happen. You're doing it. You're making it happen. You're voting for the identity you want. I've just seen what Charlie's typed in the chat, and I'm really interested in that. Um, so just to touch on that briefly, Charlie says, would love feedback. I'm in a struggle pit. Um, well, I wouldn't sit in the pit, Charlie. At least get out of the pit first before you take the next action. I love designing new products, but really struggle to make money from it. And so keep contemplating about full-time work, not working for myself, et cetera. And I guess like it's a couple of things that jumped out for me, Charlie, that might help. The first one is temporarily fire the designer in you. Like the designer in you is taking your focus off of the action that you could take to get results. Pick one of the products that you've designed so far that's your best guess of what you're most excited about that you think actually could do something like I say, fire the designer in you and focus on making sales. That's the only way to know if if it's going to work for you. And it is, it's mini experiment territory. And the Rebel Entrepreneur podcast has got several episodes on mini experiments that will help. We've got episodes on sales that will help. And in particular, you know, getting paid in advance before you've made something. I think the effort and energy needs, needs to go in a different place to where it's currently gone so far. Anything to add on that, Al? Because I know that this this is something you've done once or twice. The Jamie Dillon series, uh, which was an artist who didn't know, she had so many ideas of how to make money out of her art, but didn't know where to focus. And it sounds like that with Charlie, I've got so many different designs. You're talking about a podcast series. Yeah. And uh, on your podcast, on my podcast, the <laughs> Rebel Entrepreneur podcast, listen to that. The first few episodes are how to choose an idea. Then she decides, I'm going to sell a comic book. So we create a Kickstarter and we pre-sell the comic book before she's even launched it. She does a mini experiment to see if anyone buys. She's really scared. She launches it. Uh, she sells. Oh, don't. don't. Spoiler alert. OK, like listen to the podcast. <laughs> it will unlock well. you. Take action. That's the key is take action and you will make progress on it. Um, Never leave the scene of a decision without taking action and making progress. And many experiments are part of knowing whether it will work or not. And Hasina has put the link in the chat, both on YouTube and Zoom, to that already. So thank you, Hasina. Hasina, you are amazing. Uh, 
Next mini step here is to visualize it as if it's already happened, which we spoke a bit about last week. But the key here is to close your eyes for a second and imagine what it would be like having done it. Quite often when I do this step, things come to mind about what I should do next. So I start to visualize it and then I'm like, oh, that's the thing I need to do next. So I close my eyes. As Simon loves to say, I find calm and peace. And then I visualize what I want as if it's actually happening. And the actions and the ideas of what to do next help you get going. And then you just got to take the inspired action that comes to you as you visualize it. It'll make a huge difference. Simon. I was just going to add applied manifesting to what Cassandra's written in the chat. She says, is this like manifesting? And it kind of is. But for me, it's more focused. It's more, uh, you know, directly in relation to the goals that you do. And I think, you know, a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about taking the family to New York. That came as a direct result of visualizing. And there was absolutely no way that I could see how that was even remotely possible. And 12 months to the day, we're on a flight on our way to New York. We had no money in the bank at the time of visualising. I had two cars that were about to, to, um, to die. Both of them needed MOTs and test certificates and all sorts. And visualisation actually... <clears throat> now, whether the, whether the thing happens or not is kind of irrelevant in some ways. It feels great. You know, just just to give yourself a gift of time and just spend five or 10 minutes thinking. We spend so much time thinking about why things aren't possible. We spend so much time about, all, you know, thinking about all the problems that are holding us back. You know, flip it around. Just give yourself a gift of 10 minutes of dreaming of what's possible and what it would feel like and, and what it would look like and sound like. And it, to me, that's such a gift if nothing else, a respite from telling yourself all the things that you can't do. Let's start rebalancing that. And I love the film, The Secret, and all of that manifesting stuff, but I feel like they missed a key point, which is you have to make it happen afterwards. Like there's lots of people sitting there in their house thinking about winning the lottery and it never happens for them. Like just think about something within your power and take action. It's incredibly powerful. Uh, and Simon and I are working on uh, a bonus thing for you over the next couple of weeks to help you do this. Um, and what I then do when I go through this process is I write my top four goals and then I set up a little thing that has my why, uh, a little current status of where I am with the project, and then a next action. And these were the last four goals that I set in August. One was to hire a virtual assistant because we had more to do than we could ever do. We wanted to publish our first ever financial independence YouTube series. I wanted to run an extraordinary course and I wanted to go on a Disney adventure. Um, so you are all part of ticking off number three tonight. Ooh, uh, when it's done are there now rainbows and unicorns going to come flying out the screen i don't know but hopefully someone will write me a nice message afterwards and say <laughs> i enjoyed the course that will be reward enough i don't need rainbows You're and fishing. unicorns fishing for compliments. maybe they won't <laughs> uh, so it's like those four goals and the key bit here is like the why where are you and what are you doing about it? And then each week I would check in and take the next action, take the next action, take the next action and relentlessly move towards it. One final piece, which is from week three, is the congruency check. Does it all line up for you? Because you've got to be very careful setting a goal that doesn't line up with your values or doesn't line up with your identity. You're setting yourself up for being stuck if you've not worked through some of this stuff to help you get alignment or congruency on what you're going on. So if your goal is to lose weight, like work on the identity that I am someone who is healthy and fit. I value my health. I believe it's possible to lose weight. I have the skills to go and do the exercises and work through those different elements which help you. So it's just a quick check. So to summarize this whole first section, here is the goal setting stuff. So I'd like you to take this away and like finish the process because we probably haven't actually finished it right now. 
Uh, Malcolm, have you finished the whole process? No, he's shaking his head. Not yet. Well, Malcolm's so, getting a hard time tonight, isn't he? <laughs> he's just there on he's my just, screen. He's just on Alan's screen. He's so there. getting a little bit. I love, love Malcolm. you, Malcolm. Of attention. I do as well. He's got a lovely smile. Um, so it's like five things you're proud of. 50 plus ideas, people you want to meet, place you want to go, things you want to do, give, whatever it is. Uh, then set a time frame against them. Choose the top four one year goals. Write a paragraph of why. Make it juicy. Who do you have to become to get this goal? Take action and then just check the congruency. So if you want to take a photo of this slide, uh, we will put it in the homework and the notes tomorrow. But if you want to take a photo so you've got it, you can have it. But that's the full process outlined for you so that it's nice and easy for you to follow through the steps and set something exciting to focus on. Final thing we wanted to say on this is do this. Like it is the ultimate self-love and self-care to set goals that you actually want to work, work on, focus on, like do the work and create the life you want to live. That will be the biggest gift you can give anyone around you, including us. You know that weird week between Christmas and New Year and everyone's like a bit bored and confused what day of the week it is, whether they've got any milk and bread in the house and whether the shops are open. Why not? use that time to do this rather than like having another mince pie do it with your kids get your kids to do it and then help them create make real one of the goals they've written like do it as a family do it with different pieces people uh, do it for yourself get time away from the family in the christmas period if you want to um, but use that period to do it it'll make a huge difference uh simon before we move on to Brave. the next section do you have anything to add Oh, Katie's. I just got excited because Brady said goal experience mint pie. What is a mint pie, Brady? It's mince pie with a C E, not mint pie. Ah, yes. Anyway, we digress. I don't know where Brady's from, Brady? actually. Uh, peppermint pies are, are a thing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do um, like peppermint. Yeah, I had a couple of quick bits to add before we move on to the next bit. And I guess the first one for me is a watch out here, and that is on the homework list, step three is if you're anything like me, you'll put everything in the kitchen sink in a one-year goal. You're like an unreasonable <laughs> expectation of what's actually possible whilst I've got everything else going on, right? So I think you've got a really good opportunity by taking a long view and saying, actually, do I really need to deliver that one this year? Can I pop that into year two, year three? And I think and what made me think of that, I was looking at um, a couple of the answers and Rachel's Rachel's question jumped out at me when she said, how do you get past the mental block of having failed to achieve the goal for years? And I think like the word failed is an indication that you're telling yourself a story that you're being unkind to yourself, that there could be a whole bunch of reasons why you've not been able to figure that out yet. Maybe next year is the thing. Maybe you could take the pressure off yourself and actually and say, look, next year is all about self-care. And in 2024, I'm going to work on my way. And you might go, actually, no, that feels uncomfortable. I want to start working on it straight away. But what I do know is be kind to yourself first. Look after yourself first. And that includes your thoughts. And it includes those 1% gains that we've been talking about. And then maybe you'll see that actually there's a route that you haven't tried yet. There's something that you haven't figured out. And it's just around the corner, Rachel. You've already got everything that you need within you. And the solution is just around the corner. I it's love that. A couple of questions. Uh, Darren says, just curious, anything specific about choosing top four goals? Uh, the reason it's four is it's fairly easy to manage. What tends to happen is people set 15 goals and then they deliver none of them. Like pick four, start on them. And then when you've knocked one off the list or two off the list, you can replace it with another one from your ideas. Uh, so it just gives you like that tangible amount that you can start on that's not overwhelming. Um, Lisa said, is there a danger you put things off that you want to do but are less urgent if you just do the one year goals? Um, so that's why we had those different frames to choose from. So some of you will put off things that are for you. That's why you have pick something that's just for you. 
Some of you will put off things that are like your finances because you just don't like it yet. Um, so maybe you have the frame of like getting to financial independence. That's the moonshot. And I'll start with the next action of watching Rebel Finance School. I was like, it, like there is that danger. You need to know yourself and know which way you need to pick. And the frames will help you to do that. And Carolyn says, can or do I work on some of my longer term goals? So if they're like the three, five or 10 year goals and do some small actions towards them now, if I can. I definitely break those down into a smaller one. So like maybe your 10 year goal is have a business that employs 12 people. Well, let's start by getting your first 50 grand's worth of sales. That's the goal that we start with. That's the goal that we work on and then move forwards. Uh, Bishoy says, what do we do with our three, five and 10 year goals? Um, some of them you'll be working on because they're in your life areas. Some of them you'll come back to. Some of the smaller goals that you pick will build into them. You're not giving up on any of them. We're just focusing on the first four as a starting point to get us going. Does that make sense? Perfect. I want to share one of Teresa's. She said, this year, my goal was to go to more live events and have more experiences that make me feel alive. I wrote down I wanted to go to the theatre at least six times. And it really focused me to book stuff in the diary. And it was great to have those things to look forward to and make it happen. Oh, I love that, Teresa. What a wonderful goal. And then you can just book it and make it happen. Um, I always used to like getting the magazine with the top movies coming out in the next year. And I would put all the release dates in my diary and make sure I go and watch all the top movies the next year. I love that type of stuff. You like do things for you, do things for you. Cool. So do this for yourself. We need to move on to the next section. Uh, Simon, do I have your permission to move on to the next section? Please go ahead, Alan. Perfect. <laughs> I don't know why I saluted. I just felt the need to salute. But can please continue. I'm going to ask for my permission. I deserve that. No, I was going to get you to lead it. Oh, jolly totally good. I can't believe I said jolly good. I'm jolly so good. British. You can take the girl English. out of Britain, but you can't take Britain out of the girl. Um, getting things done. So this section is all about how to get things done. And I have a question for you in relation to this. What do you have on your to-do list? Do is you it, have a to-do list? Is it, <laughs> is it a bunch of really weird and wonderful things, some of which is grand, like start a business or... Um, take a trip around the world and some of it's just much smaller like go and get milk for tomorrow's breakfast or oh I really must call Jeff back and we have on our to-do list or a lot of people have is all these sort of different levels of thinking that it makes it really confusing and you look down your list and you're like start a business oh, I'll never get to that I can't do that and look down to the next one and people's lists are filled sometimes with reminders, sometimes their next actions, sometimes their giant projects, sometimes they're just ideas. Like one day I will learn Polish and that ends up on your to do list and just stares at you for the rest of your life because <laughs> you're not ready to do it. Like people have this whole set of mixed up stuff on their to do list and start a business. That's just if you look down your to do list and see that that's just overwhelming, isn't it? Because that's not actionable. It's like, what do I do about that? So we wanted to introduce you to the idea of a project list, which is the way that Alan and I organize the things that we do. So a project is like the overall arching thing. So start a business is a project and then you need to break it down into what the specific next action is. And on your to-do list or what a lot of people have is a mixture of projects and actions so we're going to explain to you what we mean by that as to have a project and then next to it what the next action is because that's how you make things happen is you take these big things and you turn it into little actions so do you need to know every step towards making your goal real no, you do not. You just need to know the next step and use your brain power to work out what the next action is. And maybe you don't know what the next action is. Maybe you need to ask for help. Maybe you need to ask help of someone that's done the thing that you're trying to do. Always ask for help if you get stuck. Then you just start. You take that next action. But it's the key of doing this thinking and breaking it down that makes it achievable for you to make progress. And that's what we really need to do. And this is why people get stuck 
on their projects because they have things on their project list like i don't know what's an example uh get car serviced does anyone have get car serviced on their things to do is anyone thinking that's something annie's saying no she doesn't need her car serviced at the moment um <laughs> is get car serviced laurie says yes perfect laurie are you there uh is get car serviced the next action? Does no, anyone know? Laurie says no. Laurie says no. That's for my husband's to-do list. Yeah. <laughs> or you could wait until the car tells you, which is a good tip from Vanya. I'm not sure it is a great tip, actually. I think if the car's telling you, maybe it's already too late unless you've got one of those really fancy ones. Maybe that. Um, maybe. So getting your car serviced is not a next action unless you are stood there with your overalls on, spark plugs in hand, <laughs> ready to change the oil and do it. It might be book the car in to get serviced, or you might even not know where you're going to book it. So it's ask Simon for a recommendation of a mechanic that I can get my car serviced. But it's doing the thinking to break it down into what's the actual next step to be able to do it makes it real. I love this. Paul's fessing up to his. He's got, I've got get Christmas food shopping done on my list. That's a project. There's no, like the next action might be list out what I want to buy. And he also said, uh, I have fixed gate on house on my fixed list as well. On house. Do you have everything you need to do it? Do you well, hire like someone? <laughs> I'm picking on Paul here because I know he can take it. Uh there's okay, so we... one thing that's just jumped out at me before we move on. I love what Lisa said. Or actually, there's two things. The first thing is I want to know what you're looking at on the laptop screen in that picture. Is that something <laughs> inappropriate that I've sent you? That's my first question. Uh, you don't need to answer live on YouTube if you don't want to. My second point is Lisa says this is making me feel excited and that it's achievable. I think I'm getting it. I don't think there's there's not that many comments that I've got ex so excited about. Lisa, a hundred percent. And I think the thing for me, like if you're feeling excitement in your body, it's usually because you've broken it down into something that you can see what you can actually do about it. And now if you're anything like me, I, I before I understood this stuff, and I think this is one of the greatest gifts that you've given me, Alan, is this thing. Out of all of the stuff that we've covered on this course, this is in my top three life-changing things because I would have a to-do list full of projects and and I used to have it on my whiteboard and I'd walk past it every day and go oh my god that looks horrendous and just keep walking and not take any action so and just get like massively overwhelmed by this stuff the whole point of breaking it down into a next action is so that you can start to feel excited and that that, that exact thing happened to me I did it um what was it Saturday night because that's how I roll on a Saturday night Saturday night I'm writing a whole bunch of projects what the next actions are I woke up on Sunday morning excited to do my tax return Adele <laughs> that's thing. like that's the bit that that's what this stuff actually does it makes it manageable makes it achievable and points to exactly something small that you can do right away you don't need to see the whole thing you just need to see the next couple of steps and that's plenty to get started and you can start to feel the progress right and you take that time to work out what the next action is to unlock it so that you can walk past that whiteboard and just go oh yeah I can do that that's the power of it. Yeah. Mark Crosley asked if uh, on the screen, on the slide, we were looking at someone's pineapples and that's why we laughed like that. I, I don't know what that means because we would compare. never compare. Um, and Pete says he feels unlocked and he's starting to see the wood from the trees, which is awesome. So a quick test for you. Project or next action, please like now build a business. Project or next action. If project, anyone says project, 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 project if anyone project, says project. next action, they're going to get shot. Drastic. It's quite drastic in a very loving way. Everyone's saying project. Okay. Perhaps should have done this. Make a sales time, call, right? project or next action. Make sales call. Action. People action, are saying action. Action, action. Well, I guess it depends if you know who you're Someone calling. Project. A few people are saying project. Like if you know who it is you're calling and who you're selling to, then it could be a next action. Um, but if you don't, it might be work out who to call. It depends what it is. So it could be either side. And if you put make sales call on your to-do list and it's not clear who you're calling and exactly about what, you'll never get it done. 
Because every time you look at it, you'll feel, I don't know what that exactly means. Yeah, it needs to be something so specific that it's like, okay, I can pick up the phone, dial that number and off I go. Exactly. And Sandy says, do you know what you're selling? That's part of it. Like if you know what you're selling and you know who you're calling and you've got a list, then the next action is just make the calls. Someone's asking you for for your phone number. What's my phone number? (laughs) Is that anonymous? We need to step in here. (laughs) Oh, don't worry. I'll post it in the chat for you. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, (laughs) You're welcome. Call Jeff about next action on project. Are we assuming we know what we're calling Jeff about? Yes, about the whatever dot, it is. Dot, dot could be whatever. Yeah, it's yeah, next action. action. Everyone's saying action. Perfect. Invest £100. Kathleen's getting involved on YouTube as well. I love it. Invest £100. Action or? Oh, project. Mixture of projects and actions. Again, I think it depends if you're very clear on what you're investing in and you know exactly what you're doing and literally you just need to like log on and invest your hundred pounds. That is next action. If you have no idea how to invest your hundred pounds, then that would be a project. Exactly. So I've got an investment account open. I know what I'm doing. I could just put it in. Uh, but if you don't, it's definitely a project. I think people are getting this. Yeah. Organized birthday party. You've got this now. That's definitely a project. Uh, spend 15 minutes planning. That's the next action. Uh, and those are the difference between them. Uh, if you can break things down into action, you'll feel like you can actually make progress. If you have projects on your list, you will get stuck. So this is how we organize stuff. This is how we put it together. And it's had a massive impact on us and the people around us helping them make progress. So this is three examples on our project list. So the project extraordinary life course notes. And then we just write a short description as to where we are with it or what it is to remind ourselves. I mean, I know what the extraordinary life course is, but maybe other things I don't. So we're running this course in November and December. The next action, practice the slides with Simon. Then we might have the project review 2022 finances. Which is an actual project we have at the moment. I'm so excited. Uh, we want to review our spending and change in net worth for 2022. And then when it's something you might actually have to wait a little bit of time for, 2022 hasn't finished. We need to wait till the end of the year to do it. So what we do is we put a little question mark saying we're waiting for something and that might be for a little bit of time to pass or maybe you're waiting for a call back from someone because you've rung someone and you're waiting for them to get back to you. We always just put that as a little waiting for so that we know that the ball's in someone else's court or we have to wait a little bit of time for something. Don't allow waiting for us to be on your list forever and to be an excuse for not carrying on. You can then look down and be like, oh, so-and-so hasn't got back to me. I better chase them up. Exactly. It's just a way to capture like, oh, that someone else is on that. I'll re-look at this in a little bit. So in the last 10 days of the year, we're waiting for my future spending on tacos before we can review oh, the finances. That's okay. what we're waiting for. <laughs> and final one, project is world domination. We want to conquer the world as part of our evil galactic empire. And the next action is put advert on Facebook for evil henchmen. So look out for that advert that will be coming out in the next couple of days. I think Malcolm's already applying. That's what's happening right now. Good old Malcolm. (laughs) Um, And can you see by having these clear next actions, it just makes it so easy to pick things off. And we've done the thinking up front. And so then we have those few minutes of time and space and energy to do something, just glance down that list and go oh I can pick that one off let's go and do it and it releases the energy and makes you want to do more whereas having a list of projects that doesn't energize you yes uh Liz says how often do you review this uh we tend to do it like with my actual really big goals I tend to do it a month uh just to keep me on target. If it's something I'm really focused on, I do it once a week to keep the progress going. And the more you focus on it, the more you review it, the more you'll tick off the next action and then come up with the next one. Just don't make the mistake that I did when I first started doing this was I wrote project notes and then I wrote every action I have to take. Like, don't bother doing that. You will feel overwhelmed. Just write the one next action. And once you've done that, then write the next one. And it just keeps you taking one small step at a time rather than getting overwhelmed. Because we don't want that feeling of, I can't be bothered. I can't be overwhelmed. Um, And if you ever get that, Katie has a trick that she used on me this week. I call it the 15 minute trick. I say, Alan's like, oh, I don't have any energy. Just like, let's just watch a show and like chill out. I'm like, oh, what if we just did something for 15 minutes? What if we just go and work on the course for 15 minutes? And he's like, I tend to go, (laughs) 
all right then we can do 15 minutes and then like you get into it and normally what happens with us is like two hours pass and you don't want to stop but it's just like a little trick to say I'm just going to start and I'm going to do 15 minutes and you are allowed to stop after 15 minutes it's just a trick to be like okay I'm just committing to 15 minutes I'll see how I feel but if you do 15 minutes every day that's way better than trying to like force yourself through a like a two-hour thing and it's just a trick to uh maybe trick your loved ones into doing things as well. You're a formidable yeah. opponent, Katie Donegan, and a formidable, <laughs> can't even say it. So Sheila says, will this be in the notes? Uh, yes, it's our intention that this will go in the notes along with all of the other good stuff that we've had uh, so far tonight. Uh, uh, Jill says, haha, I knew you were a cult. Damn it, we've been busted. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing to myself here because some of these answers are genius. Robin says, next action should be read 101 things I'd do if I was an evil overlord. And uh, Mike, uh, who wins prize for comment of the day so far, does world domination align with your values, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan? Questions on everyone's lips. Moving on. We do uh, need to do a congruency check. Yeah, we do need to do a congruency check. Uh, Someone wrote about this. Don't keep stuff in your head. Like think on paper. And actually, it doesn't have to be paper. It can be electronically on your computer. But get the stuff out of your head. There's some really important studies coming out now about getting your things you've got to do out of your head and down on paper is actually really good for your mental health. It allows space in your mind for that calmness, like get it out of your head, think on paper and think once and write it down. And I think that's real key piece about think once and then write down what you've decided. If you're trying to think whether to do something or not, first of all, like journaling can help to like get it out, get your thoughts out on paper and stop going around in the same loops. But then also just writing it down saying, I have decided to do X or to not do X and here's why. And then it can solidify it and you can put it down and you can always revisit it if it doesn't quite feel right. But it's just a way of like parking it and saying, okay, this is the decision. And also when you might revisit things, it's like, okay, this isn't quite right for now. I'll come back in a year. And you've written that down and you've released yourself from it. And because this is kind of where people get stuck in purgatory and that thing of being stuck, you like, you've got a goal, but you're not doing it. And you're stuck in this in-between state. It's not useful. Uh, You had one where you were stuck recently. Well, for some time. For some time. (laughs) Uh, I recently got my Polish passport, so I'm very excited to learn some Polish uh, so I can speak to my fellow countrymen and women. And uh, but I've kind of had it in my head of like, oh, I really want to learn Polish. And then I'll like kind of have it on a loop in my head. Oh, I really want to learn Polish. I really want to learn Polish, but not do anything about it and just have it like almost like niggling at me. So you need to like either do it or park it somehow and say okay we might be going to Poland next summer I'm gonna write it down on my Sunday maybe list which is things I might do someday or I maybe want to do and say okay I'll like revisit this when we're in Poland and it will be easier to learn Polish surrounded by Polish people so stop being in purgatory and thinking niggling at these things it's okay to park things for later when it makes more sense to do them and this is like you, the goal ideas that you've written that's like a someday maybe list. And then you pick the ones you're actually actively making happen. And that's the difference because you can't make it all happen at once. Just pick the things that you're actually going to make happen at that point. It makes such a difference. Couple more tips on how to make things happen. The next is use your calendar. Katie, what does that mean? If you need to be somewhere at a certain time or in a certain place, put it in your calendar. Like it sounds obvious and do you, but do you actually do it? Do you end up like missing things or not being somewhere? Like, did you put this course in your calendar so that you knew and you had the Zoom link and you knew every Monday that where to be and what to do? The power of the calendar is amazing and it gets it out of your head rather than thinking, oh, what was I meant to be doing tonight? You've put it in the calendar and you know. If you want to see your friends again. <laughs> Uh, it's very it sounds a bit dramatic, in, doesn't it? In hindsight, this slide is very aggressive. It's not meant to be. Uh, like when you finish seeing your friends, do you say, "When shall we meet again?" 
and you organize the next thing you're going to do immediately. And it's like taking the next thing and organizing that straight away. That's how you make it happen. That's how you stay in touch with people. That's how you make the next step happen. So always be thinking like, oh, like at the end of a fun time, when are we going to do this again? That's how you keep going because it's always more fun with other people. Um, What is this referring to? It's always more fun with other people. Like. Oh, okay. I just wanted to um, acknowledge Lindsay's put a couple of notes in the chat of like things she's struggling with. Lindsay, if you can stick around and we'll um, help you in the Q&A bit if you're able to, so we can like go through what you might need help with. Who's on your team, Alan? Uh, you. Oh, so this comes back to like, it's more fun doing stuff with, with and other people. And who's on your team? Is it your partner? Is it your family? Is it your friends? If you don't feel like you've got anyone that you can do this with, look around on this course. There's hundreds, thousands of people that are doing this. Who might you put in your team? And I'm going to come back to this quote that I did on the week one. Uh, you will do very well on your own, but with others, you could be magnificent. And that was Enola Holmes' mum that said that. Uh- And there are so many people in the Facebook group on this call who want to do cool stuff. Like, just ask for people you want to do things with. It's incredible. Uh, Rebecca says, do people connect through the Facebook group? Uh, The finance school, they have different people who have monthly finance meetings together. They work together on different pieces. Loads of people connect through the different group. So absolutely use that and do that. And you mean people can do that in the Extraordinary Rebel Facebook group that we have? Yes. Yes. Uh, SRF says, Alan and Katie, are you going to run an online finance course next year? The answer is yes. Can I put it in my calendar? The answer is you can, you could, but we be, don't have a date. It'll be very vague. You could put it in for the whole of 2023. Yeah, just put coming in 2023 because we are not committing yet. That's still on the someday maybe list. Um, can I recommend a, an automatic email that goes on the first of every month to the Donegans and asking them, you know, when is, have you got the dates for the final? No, you, you cannot. Simon, are you, you suggesting spamming us? No, that's not spam. It's a, <laughs> it's a timely and efficient way of asking the question. Anyway, I think a, I think a potentially more efficient way would be to sign up to our mailing list and then when when we announce when the course will be, people will we'll send you an email. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm just creating my auto email right now. Simon, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, the yes. next little piece of this: Who invited him? I don't know. He's never doing it with us again. Who do you surround yourself with? The people you surround yourself with will either lift you up or drag you down and look at who are the five people closest to you because you will become the sum of the five people you surround yourself with. If you spend time around people who lift you up and support you, it will change everything for you. If you spend time around people who say things like, there's no point writing goals, we never do them anyway, uh, it will drag you down and stop you making progress. It changes everything. And these are some of the people we hang around with. They lift us up. They help us to do more. They inspire us. So just having a think about who are you surrounding yourself with and who are you spending your time with? Karen says, what do you advise for introverts? What do I advise for introverts? Uh, Find people you want to be extroverted around. Because there are some people I want to be introverted around because they scare me. And there are other people that allow me to be who I want to be. So find people that you can be who you want to be around. It makes a huge difference. Um, And then ask for help. Simon, help. (laughs) What do you need me to do, Alan? How can I help you? Uh. Asking for help is so critical. And I just wondered if you had a riff on this as someone who sometimes hides rather than asking for help. <laughs> I may have been guilty. Of, I say hiding. I think processing it on my own, I think is a more accurate <laughs> way. But uh, thanks for saying that anyway. Um, I love you. I, know, like, I guess like the thing for me is, and I loved your answer about the introvert, by the way. I think that's a brilliant answer, annoyingly. And... <laughs> um, <laughs> Because I think I'd put myself in that category too. And it's almost like a surprise. You know, when you go, 
I've been hanging on to this thing. I've been trying to figure out this out for ages and ages. And then the moment that you do eventually ask for help, someone that you share it with, who, by the way, is not emotionally attached to the outcome in the same way that you are. So they don't have the same stories. Sometimes they they just come out with something and go, they just do that. You go, oh, I didn't even. Oh, no, I didn't even think of that. Why didn't I do that the first time around? So I think the thing for me is you can sit and struggle with this stuff on your own. What I do know, and someone asked whether the Facebook group is going to stay live, that Facebook group is like it hasn't even got warmed up yet. There's some great stuff in there, but that's our group, folks. It's your group, you know, and and you can make that group work for you. And I'm going to I'm going to encourage you to if you haven't got the network around you that you think you might need currently, then you are literally one Facebook post away from folk that want to get involved and support you. So asking for help. Yes, do that. Uh, deserving people. Now, I have met so many deserving people in my life and they're incredible people and they sit there being deserving, but they forget to do one really important thing. And where this really struck me was in Newport, in this marketplace, we were running a rebel business school and there was a lady called Liz and she did free tasters of her business, which was Reiki healing. So she did free tasters for the people in the market and she would use her energy to heal people. She would give them support. And then she came to me at the end of the day and said, like, I've run eight or nine of these free taster sessions, but nothing's happened. No one's brought, no one's bought the item. And she was so distressed so distressed because everyone had said they'd enjoyed it and i said to her well like okay so you've done this all day have you asked anyone to buy and she looked at me a bit confused I mean, what do you mean asked i was like did you directly ask them to buy and she said well i asked them if they liked it i said okay cool so you asked them if they liked it and what did they say and they said yes i liked it and then what did you do they smiled and that was it like, well that's your opportunity to say well if you liked it would you like to book a full session you have to ask and i think so many people forget to ask for what they want so stop being deserving and start asking for help for support for a raise at work for someone to go on a journey with you for whatever it is like we need to stop being shy and we need to start asking. And this is one of the best bits of feedback uh, I got from the podcast about asking. Uh, and this was from uh, a listener from America. They said uh, the you don't get what you deserve. You get what you ask for message has helped me to the tune of thousands of dollars over the last several months in negotiating bonuses and extra compensation for extra shifts in the hotel. Whenever I get a text asking to work, your voice complete with a British accent echoes in my head. Uh, so if you need to install a mini <laughs> Allen in your head oh, that guys. says... Oh my ask goodness. for what you want because if you don't ask you don't get <sighs> tell people what you're doing what are you doing Alan? what am i doing <laughs> this is for two reasons one if you just start talking about what you're doing and not necessarily even asking for help people might think oh you're doing that I know someone else a friend of a friend that's doing that maybe I can connect you to maybe that's something you'd like to do together and also the act of saying and repeating something that you're doing to different people reinforces that that's something that you want to do and that you are doing and saying it is so powerful and this led to a huge piece of business for me just the act of saying what I was doing on LinkedIn uh led to someone reaching out saying oh, you're doing that. I'm doing a project for my business and I'm looking for someone who is doing that. And I ended up winning a contract running training courses in Dubai from just telling people what I was up to. Uh, most people are not very good about shouting about what they're doing. And you don't even have to shout. You just need to tell people what you're up to, what you're working on. So please tell other people what you're doing. They want to know. They're interested. 
because everything you want in life is done through and with other people. Nothing is done in isolation. I don't care whether you're an author and you're writing your book in isolation. You still need a publisher. You Even if you don't, you get it on Amazon. You still need customers. You need readers. Whatever project you're doing is done through and with other people. So your ability to work with them makes such a difference. So I'm just having a smashing time here. Don't worry, you carry on. The guy okay. in this picture is, uh, has actually figured out that everything you want in life is done through and with other people. That's why he's looking so happy. Yes. He's also doing nothing and letting everyone else do the work, by the <laughs> looks of it in this photo. Delegation. Yes. Speaking of other people and teams, we have had a team to do this course for you. We haven't been able to do this all on our own. We have asked for help. And we just wanted to say thank you to our team of extraordinary helpers and honour them. So they've been helping out on the calls live, helping out with the comments and answering your questions and helping in the Facebook group, mon moderating that and helping facilitate the Q&A after the calls, helping us write the notes that go out every week as well. Um, if they've helped you, please thank them directly. And we had a little ceremony to thank them publicly so extraordinary helpers extraordinary helpers please kneel uh we can see you so we actually want you to do this <laughs> and he's in bed like kneel in bed or something uh anita and dan have not moved tracy like, we can see come you. on i Vanya can see can you, see you. <laughs> tracy is kneeling perfect vanya's looking shocked to all here present know ye oh tony 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 tony, tony come on Tony and our live studio audience, know ye that Anita, Annie, Chris, Dom, Emma, Hajira, Hasina, Joshua, Martin, Sarah F, Sarah M, Shona, Steph C, Steph M, Sue, Tony, Tracy, Vanya. You can see how big our team is. We can't do this all on our own. These people have been amazing. In recognition of your long and honourable service to the extraordinary course. You've put up with us for six weeks. That's quite impressive. You are hereby admitted as lords and ladies in the sacred order of the rebel pineapple. So please rise and receive your status ex as extraordinary rebel lords and ladies. You can choose your own designation of the one that you identify with the most. Anita, Annie, Chris, Dom, Emma, Hajira, Hasina, Joshua, Martin, Sarah F, Sarah M, Shona, Steph C, Steph M, Sue, Tony, Tracy, and Vanya. You are knighted. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Anita and Dan. I love that you're saluting. I'm very disappointed you didn't get on your knees for the ceremony. It's ridiculous. Um, but we love you all. We could not have done this course for this many people without these incredible people helping us. Uh, and Portia has put big pineapple thank you to everyone. <laughs> um, pineapples all round. The nice, fresh variety, not the tinned variety. Oh, Jen said you make Katie, Alan and Simon look good. <laughs> And whilst we're on the subject, it doesn't belong on pizza. Please keep going. Uh, the course and community is massively richer because of your help. Thank you. Please, like, appreciate this. Thank you. Okay, that's a thank you to the helpers and the incredible people that have helped us put this on. Uh, we've got a couple more bits, uh, and then we have a thank you to all of you. So until confidence, confidence, Simon, confidence, like, do you feel confident? Uh, well, it's a bit of a phantom confident. Sometimes I feel confident. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I should feel confident. And it evaporates just in the moment I'm about to walk on stage and deliver an 18 minute, highly polished, scripted thing. And confidence, I don't know where I left it. I left it in the in the room out the back or in the car or something like that. But the thing about confidence is... Um, well, you can kind of hack confidence by taking action. And I think that's one of the things that's been, that's shifted a lot of people that have come through Rebel Business School and they go, I feel a bit scared to make a phone call. Yeah, I know, me too. Should we, um, should we make the phone call now? Together? Um, there, is, there is a certain person that, I, that didn't like making phone calls that I'm not going to embarrass that person now, that that person may be on this call. And I was a bit cruel because... She didn't like making phone calls. And then I made her ring, ring me and then I hung up. So she had to ring me twice. So by the end of the thing, we'd had two calls and, and that like she didn't feel confident, but she still made the phone calls. And, and there's, there's more than one person that I've been a, a little bit tough love, you know, a little bit unkind. 
but it just proves that you can take action. You don't have to feel confident to take action. And that's it. Yes. And until confidence shows up, action will do. That's how we start things. Now, some of the reasons why people don't take action is the risk of putting yourself out there. So some of the things, some of the goals you might come up with might involve doing something that is more public. Maybe you want to start a blog. Maybe you want to create music. Maybe you want to write a book. And people think there's this risk of putting yourself out there. And they're normally thinking of negative outcomes. Rejection. Of like what might happen and what are people going to think and what are they going to say and what if they hate it? But they never think of the risk of something positive happens. So risk can mean positive things happen as well. So what if people love it? What if like it changes people's lives what if not only do they like love it they share it with other people and this, my work gets spread around the world there's always like the positive side to things and people are going to react how they're going to react people angry people are going to be angry thoughtful people are going to be thoughtful scared people are going to be scared confused people are going to be confused bored people are going to be bored that's just who they are and it's, how they react normally has nothing to do with your stuff you had a podcast episode about this. We did. I did an entire podcast episode on dealing with the haters. If you're someone who is worried about putting yourself out there, listen to that episode and then do it anyway. People are going to react how people are going to react. And we just need to get on with doing what we can do. That's it. Let's talk a little bit about com keeping momentum over time because you're going to get very excited on the course we're going to get massive energy and then next week we won't be there next monday night there won't be alan katie and simon on a zoom call going what are you going to do this week to make one percent better uh you've got to maintain your own momentum over time and i just want you to realize that there is three types of energy that normally happens with a project. The first is like the exciting beginning. I'm excited. I've got a new project. I've got an idea. Woo! And I go out there and I do lots of stuff. And then you get to the phase where you've used up that excited energy and you've got to keep going for a period, even though you might not be that excited. And we like to affectionately call it the dip in energy in the middle. And this is where a huge number of people give up and they never finish it off. They just go back to the beginning and start a new project and they're addicted to starting things and they never finish. But the value is in the last little bit. And if you can find that finishing energy to drive it over the line, to make it happen, to get it done, that's where the magic is. So I just want you to realize that in one week, two weeks, three months, six months, maybe three years, there will be a dip in energy and you need to find the motivation to keep going. And Ooh. the way you do that is reconnecting with your why. GCY. And it's expecting that dip. The dip is normal. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your goal. It just means like that is normal. That is, <laughs> that is normal. That is a human thing that will happen. Expect it and know what to do with it. So what are you going to do tomorrow? And this is one of the key ways that we make progress is deciding this up front. So the night before, probably a couple of hours before you go to bed, because you don't want to be thinking about it just as you go to bed because you'd be too excited. But what is important to get done tomorrow? Write it down. And then tomorrow, the next day, wake up and go, OK, what was on my list? The first thing was this. I am going to do that until I finished. And that's how you make the progress. Just decide the night before and then start with that and don't do anything else until you've finished it. And then if I could give you like the biggest gift, it would be the weekly check-in. So on your top four goals that you've chosen through the goal setting progress, do a weekly check-in of where am I with these four goals? What's the current status? And what's my next action? And if you do that, it is incredible how much progress you will make. Incredible. And if you ever lose the energy, reconnect with your why and keep going. This is why the Rebel Finance School course, we do the monthly check-ins because it keeps you focused on the next actions and what you're doing. And if you do that, it's unbelievable the progress you will make. Unbelievable. 
And this is all about putting yourself first. We talked about this last week. This is Robert Co- uh, Robert Covey. What's his name? Stephen Covey's uh, quadrants where you think about tasks as whether they're urgent or important. And this stuff that we're talking about is all quadrant two, meaning it's important, but not urgent. Nothing's going to die if you don't do your quadrant two stuff other than your dreams. <laughs> Too much? No, it's true. <laughs> Although Vanya looks quite shocked at that comment. Um, like if you don't do the quadrant two work, it's your goals, it's your dreams. That's the stuff that doesn't get done. All the urgent stuff always gets done, um, but it's the important stuff to you that's the stuff that you really need to focus on that makes the difference. We have so much to say about this subject of how to get things done. There's so much to cover that we don't have time for. Alan did a, a series of podcasts about this. Uh, do you want to tell them about these episodes that you did i am passionate about this subject because i think it makes a huge difference on your life and my life is getting stuff done so i did an episode on the myths of multitasking and how you can focus on what you need to do we did one about being a productive entrepreneur but it actually applies to everything in life it's just about making things happen and then i was extremely fortunate 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 to have david allen who wrote the book getting things done on my podcast uh he's kind of one of my heroes he's a huge positive impact on our lives and yeah you can we'll put the links in the youtube description as soon as been putting them in the chat as well they'll be in the follow-up um, notes as well or you can scan the qr code right now as dan is doing which i love um but there is this is one of the skills like that question of who do I need to become? Become someone who is awesome at making your dreams come true. And you do that by working on these skills of making it happen. And it makes such a difference. We have a huge amount of stuff to give you. So stay tuned for the closing message. But first we have a very quick review, Mm. which is five weeks in five slides. I can't believe it's five weeks have flown by. Uh, Let's do them alternatively. Who wants to go first? Simon, Katie, me? Yes. Yes. Excellent. I'll go first. Oh, I thought you said Simon, Katie, me. Okay, perfect. You go first then. (laughs) So Katie, week one. Week one feels such a long time ago now, but it was talking about where are you in your life right now? We can't know where we're headed until we know where we are now. And we encouraged you to choose between the red pill and the blue pill. Are you going to choose to build the extraordinary life that you want? Or are you going to go back to cat videos? (laughs) And we talked about your values and knowing what's important to you and using that as a compass to know where you're headed and what you want to do. And we talked about that in the different life areas, which helps you to think about the different areas of your life. (laughs) Which brought us on to week two, which is creating your version of extraordinary. And I really want to highlight your version. Every single person has a different version of what extraordinary is. We looked at the idea that there is enough evidence to prove that it's possible, even achievable, to create your version of extraordinary. Then we came up with questions based on your life areas, which we turned into ideas to run as mini experiments to make progress on your vision of life. And then week three was all about barriers. It's all about spotting the stories that are coming up. Because, and by the way, This is an ongoing thing. I think one of my biggest realizations was when you're creating something new, problems happen. It's not like now I've got this grand plan, everything's going to be all skiing downhill. It doesn't kind of work like that. So we looked on week three about how to spot the stories that are starting to come up when you start to feel frustrated or resistance uh, and you're not making the progress that you want to make. You're probably telling yourself a bunch of stories about something. Um, The next bit is all about the alignment levels. So we we looked at all of the different areas, all the way from from goals and visions through to the environment and everything in between. Because if you use that tool, you, you can spot some of the reasons why you might be stuck, why you're not making the progress. It probably means that you're out of alignment somewhere. And then the final part for this one is about spotting which of the beliefs are going to deliver the results for you that you want. 
and which of the beliefs are going to disempower you. You can choose your beliefs. You can even borrow someone else's beliefs if the ones that you've been using aren't delivering the results that you want. And then last week was week four, which was all about self-care. And what that really means is having a life that you feel like you don't need to escape from. And we talked about getting the basics right in terms of your physical and mental health. And how can you get 1% better in the area of your diet or your food and the way that you're sleeping and the movement and exercise that you do and the fact that happiness is not waiting for you out there somewhere once you've achieved x y and z happiness is an inside job which brings us on to week five turning dreams into reality uh one of the biggest pieces here is how juicy is your why it's always better when we do it with other people and there is a risk of putting yourself out there but we're still going to do it anyway what a course this has been uh, have you enjoyed hanging out with us? I've enjoyed it. Paula nodded. That's awesome. Malcolm <laughs> looks confused. Oh, so, Malcolm. Have I? Two thumbs up from Annie. <laughs> yes, 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 says Jill. Yes, you're amazing. Brilliant. Yes. Oh, oh we've you. loved hanging out with you as well. It has been phenomenal, the time. If you want to know more about like what we're doing next, like join the mailing list, Give us your email address and we'll tell you when the next finance course is. We're not committing to what date, but we'll tell you <laughs> when it is. We'll tell you what we're doing. We'll share articles. We'll create stuff. Uh, we'd love to support you in the future. And we are honoured that you chose to spend your Monday nights with us. It has been a journey. But wait, there's more. There's more things in the Rebel family. There's well, a lot more. Not. Surely not. Uh, What's this Rebel Entrepreneur Podcast thing, me jig? There's the Rebel Entrepreneur Podcast, which is like it's been me coaching people to build businesses and helping them take action. And the funny thing is, when you actually listen to it, it's the same principles as creating the life you want to lead. It's just some of the episodes have a specific focus on business, um, but all of the principles of creating an extraordinary life are in there. And there's some parts of it that are specifically about extraordinary life so you can have a listen to that I just wanted to mention as well this is not our opportunity to upsell you and sell you all these expensive programs that we have everything that we do at Rebel is and free. always will be absolutely free for you to come to either because we have sponsors that help us uh, cover the costs or uh, because we don't need the money and we're just doing it for fun uh, and that's the case with the rebel finance school course it's a free course we run once a year there will be one in 2023 we don't know when please don't spam us yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh there's also the course that started it all the rebel business school course simon and i uh made it up 10 years ago and there's been like 20,000 people who've come through the course so far which is just unbelievable uh Jack has very kindly updated all of the dates uh, so you can see all of the online courses and all the courses we're running over the next three months so you are welcome to come along to that it's completely free so if starting a business is on your project list maybe this is the next action uh, and then we want your feedback we want to know if you actually enjoyed the course. Um, we really want to know. So we've created a little fee feedback form. Please fill it out for us. We cannot get better without your feedback. Like if it didn't work for you, we want to know. If it did work for you, if parts of it didn't work for you, we want to know. We can only get better with your support. It's in two parts. Uh, the first is about the course, like what did you enjoy? What did you not enjoy? How did it work? And the second part is the belief survey that you did at the very start. And we want to see if we've been able to shift your beliefs from beginning to end, because that's what it's already really about, is do you believe it's actually possible for you to create the life you want to live? So Katie has got a little poll uh, to ask will you do this will you feed up do the feedback form so please vote now as to whether or not you will do the feedback form we would really like it if you're on youtube uh you could just fill it in now so there's the link to it um you could just fill it in right now if you would like to two people said they can't be bothered everyone else so far has said yes <laughs> excellent i'm gonna end that poll. Uh, like your honesty Before more people can say no yes please fill it out if you don't 
well, nothing will happen. Let's be honest. Actually, something does happen. I've heard that a fairy dies every time someone comes to one of our courses and doesn't fill oh, out no. a feedback survey, like a fairy actually dies. And that will be their responsibility. And I don't want to have that on my hands. So, um, <laughs> dark. <too much. laughs> Please don't kill Tinkerbell. Uh, and actually, if you would like a bribe, uh, we have created a certificate for you for completing the course and it is attached to the survey. So once you fill out the survey, and the only reason in the survey we're asking for your name and your email address is so that we can send you the uh, the certificate afterwards. So the survey is actually completely anonymous, like the details you put in there, we will use anonymously, but we use your name and email address. And I spent the whole of yesterday working out uh, how to send you a, um, what do you call it? Certificate. A completely bespoke certificate just for you. So once you, you fill out the survey, uh, you will get a certificate. No, the rebel elves create it for every person afterwards. Uh, so your certificate is waiting for you at the end of the survey. Um, at the end of Rebel Finance School, uh, we actually created a not-for-profit T-shirt shop. And one of the T-shirts we created was the extraordinary belongs to those that create it. So if you're looking for a gift for your loved one, <laughs> uh, we get absolutely nothing out of yeah, this. Yeah, that's what we mean by not-for-profit. It's literally like it's they're sold at cost. We make no money it's not like we reinvest the money or anything it's all done at cost there is no money involved in this for us yeah absolutely and uh yeah one of my favorite t-shirts stop looking at my pineapples uh that just made me laugh so much uh so there you go the homework for this week we know you love homework it wouldn't be a rebel uh course without homework number one the goal setting exercise please like have a proper go at that spend some time doing it Number two, the Getting Things Done podcast with David Allen. He is incredible, and I would really recommend listening to his content. Number three, do the course feedback. Please tell us what you think. And number four, uh, we're going to be sending you a visualization exercise over the next few weeks. So that is coming. So now we have the final ceremony of the week where you will all be admitted to the Sacred Order of the Rebel Pineapple for completing the course. So this is the moment you have all been waiting for, and I've been waiting for as well. Uh, we've created a crest for the Sacred Order of the Rebel Pineapple, and this is the crest for this particular course. You'll notice it has a pineapple because we don't compare. It has a magic wand because you have the power to magic up the life you actually want to lead. And it has a storybook for two reasons. Number one, because you'll spot your own stories in the future. And number two, because this is the start of the next chapter for you. And then finally, the Latin at the bottom says rebel contra normalum. And what that means is rebel against the norm. So choose your own version of life, rebel against the norm and create your version of extraordinary. So you will be admitted to the sacred order either as a dame or as a squire, depending on how you <laughs> wish to join the order. It's completely up to you or you can choose your own designation if neither of those resonate with you. And it, yeah, I love the fact Anita and Dan are laughing. This is Anita and Dan who've been helping with the course. Also, this is who someone in the course said, Dan looks the most perfect person ever, which I love. Um, yes, <laughs> give him a kiss. He deserves it. So everyone on the call, please kneel or if you can't kneel, sit comfortably for your oath. And please put your hand on your pineapple. If you do not have a pineapple to hand, Please put it on the place within you where the spirit of the pineapple resides. Wherever that is, Simon's pineapple might be on his head. Who knows? Uh, most people are putting it on their chest, which I love. Um, so here we go. Please repeat after us. It's very important that you say this out loud or with us. Please say it out loud. This actually is like saying it out loud is part of doing this. I insert your name. Like I, Alan Donegan, do solemnly swear to live my life on purpose. I choose my life and I consistently move towards it one step at a time.
I look after my physical and mental health to have the energy I need to create the life I want. I run my own race and I certainly do not compare pineapples to other people. I notice my stories, I spot my incongruence and I relentlessly focus on the extraordinary future I'm building. When I get stuck, confused or overwhelmed, I do not use this as an excuse to stop making progress. I reach out to the fellow members of the sacred order of the rebel pineapple. Most importantly, I know there are no rainbows and unicorns waiting for me when I achieve things. So I focus on happiness and fun along the way, and I enjoy the process of creating my one extraordinary life. So please rise, squires and dames of the sacred order of the rebel pineapple. Thank you for being part of our course. Give yourselves a huge round of applause, maybe a pat on the back for making it this far. Good work, everyone. What a journey this has been. Uh, and the final closing message before we go to the comments is people make this stuff too complex. They make life too complex. It does not have to be complex. Decide what you want to happen. Do something every day to move yourself towards it. Notice what's working and what isn't working. Give your energy to build extraordinary. We believe in you. Imagine there's a picture of Simon there. He didn't actually send us the picture in time. Just imagine Simon's there pointing you at, well. It's a tough day he's, yeah, today. there he is. He's had a tough day. He didn't get to it. That's fine. But we believe in you. So go forth and create the life of your dreams. That's what we want you to do after you've filled out the feedback form. <laughs> pretty please. There will be no extraordinary for you until you've done the feedback <laughs> Don't think we can say that. No, please carry on being extraordinary. There's no happiness, rainbows and unicorns waiting for you after you've done the survey. Although we may have put a picture of a unicorn at the end of the survey. You'll have um, to do it to find out. So there you go. That's the end of the course. Thank you for coming along. Thank you for being part of it. I think as well, people should feel very proud that you've come five weeks in a row like that is a big commitment to take time out of your busy lives and then lead up to Christmas and all sorts of things going on so yeah I think please feel proud of that and uh we want to make the end a little bit more uh open this week so if you have a comment if you have a question that's off subject if you want to say something uh to the group then we just want to chat to you at the end of the final week also if you've got a question we are here to help you and we are here to support you in any way uh so thank you so much for coming along uh pete says monday nights are going to be strange not having this course to go to it will be strange but at least you've got the king's speech on christmas day uh to look forward to Bit random that was a bit random i think i was thinking of boxing day and we're thinking of watching the king's speech on boxing day that's true that's what we'll be doing next monday that's what we're doing next monday anyway uh anita please save me and uh run the question stroke comment section for the end of this week i wanted to hear more from you but okay and see what you can say um but next just kick us off in our last q a Slash comment session. I'm tearing up. Is Nisa C? Hi, Nisa. Hi. Thank you so much. My comment is: Is there any way that we could have another week? <laughs> is there any way that we could have another week? We did think about putting a slide in there saying uh, we're running a bonus week. It's on Boxing Day. Who's coming? Uh, but we didn't know if anyone would do it. Um, we will think, be back for more. Okay. And the, the question that I want to ask you is that um, I actually m missed a couple of, of the weeks. And so today I, I actually spent the day going through everything. And then, <laughs> but I found myself on, on one which I had done and I spent too much time on one and then rushed through the others. Um, and I think that's kind of a pattern. So I, I do know what my 
what my ultimate moon uh, goal is, okay? But it's like so big that I, I almost don't believe that it, it, it can happen. <laughs> so, um, and uh, so I'm doing the things right now that are survival, well, not survival, but you know, survival. Um, yes. <laughs> and, and so it's, it's that thing there of how can I change my belief to believe that moon thing? Because, and I also checked it. I checked it with my values and it's in line with my values. So it's, uh, I mean, uh, this weekend also, I had a friend over and, and I just, I just quickly did something for her, you know? And she said to me, you've really got to teach this stuff. you really got to do this, you know, because I just gave her a 10-minute session to calm her down and stuff. Like, And the worst thing is that I'm able to help people, but I can't get my own shit together. <laughs> hey, Lisa, I, can I talk to that? And then I'm going to let these guys help you with the belief thing. Just yeah. on that last thing that you said there, um, that really resonates with me. So like on and off for a long time, you know, the best part of 10 years, I've been doing different um, learning programs to become a better coach. And and I, about two years ago, I, I, I went through this program and it really, like it blew me away actually. And uh, so I started coaching people, but then I stopped and I've been coaching for years, but I stopped doing it deliberately because I'm like, I can't even get my own shit together. Who am I to be helping somebody else at the moment? Right. And it's interesting because that, that story that was going on actually prevented me from doing two things, making the progress that I wanted to make, you know, becoming a better coach and sharing some of those skills with the team. And secondly, it's stopping. <laughs> I'm smiling here because it just, it's really got me. It, it stopped me from like, I was being selfish like I was holding myself back from helping other people and not sharing the skill that I have. And actually there were people that were missing out on the opportunity to make progress in their own lives. So I had to tell myself two things, stop being selfish and get your skills out there. And secondly, Oh shit. What? Well, she had to go urgently. <laughs> to <laughs> Deliver some coaching immediately. Lisa, are you okay? Community. Something's happened. She might have run out of power. I'm hoping I'm, it's just yeah, she it's ran power. out of power on the laptop. I heard the, like a beeping. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll we'll loop back round to Nisa. Let's oh, carry on. Simon, I feel bad. You were on a roll there. Hey, no worries. Like I've got many roles. I know. I have Take many roles. I have enough for so, a bakery. We're gonna put Nisa on hold for a moment. Yeah, we'll come back to Nisa. Simon's amazing steal. On a moment, on hold. The best bit was coming as well, as well. I know. Like I feel bad for Nisa. Hopefully, we can get her back shortly. Yes. And next, we will have Paul Anthony. Hello, guys. How are we? Hey, Paul. Uh, I just want to firstly say a big thank you very much. Uh, the course has been extraordinary. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Paul. No, but I absolutely love this kind of stuff. Um, so, like, you know, since my sister died a few years ago, I've been working on goal setting and life planning and all things like that. And I was actually doing a few years ago, um, uh, Darren Hardy, who was a uh, mentor as Jim Rohn, he, I was following his book and it was like an extraordinary life course. Um, and when I did that book, it, like you had a weekly river re register where you had your top three goals and you had your actions and your behaviours in there. And then the second page was like, it was like a plan, do, re, uh, re, improve kind of system. And when I did that, that year, I, my goals and everything was unbelievable. Now, I know <laughs> if I do it, that's what I'll get. But for some reason, I bought, it was like a year book, and I bought two more books since. And I've actually got one in my, uh, in my library which is like started off and then I've stopped. And I don't know why I keep dropping off it. So I've obviously got some kind of stories that I need to ask myself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's that one. And then 
what what are the feedbacks which I'll give you now if you like, or I could put it in the survey. Give you one. Uh, both. Both. Um, the alignment levels for me, because it's probably the first time I've ever done it. I, I didn't know if I was doing it right or not. I kind of just went with it. Um, there is no right something. answer. What that's is it that you keep progressing on? Was there something that was you thought wasn't clear as to how we explained how to do it, or what? What? Where was the confusion? It, so the the alignment levels you do it on each goal that you have. It's just a quick check for the goal to go. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my goal. Does my identity line up? Yeah. Do my values line up? Do I value what my goal is saying it is? How's yeah. my environment set up? So it's just a quick check. It's not something to do right or wrong. It's just that we know so many people get stuck, us included, when these things don't line up. So yeah. it's just to go, okay, my goal is to build the chef school. Yeah. But I value time with my kids. This is a flag. I need to think of a different way to do it or a different goal, or I need to think about those things. So it's not a right or wrong. It's let's check that this fits with my life, because if I'm not congruent, I'm going to hit that stuff where I'm not actually following through and doing what I want to do. And something's holding me back. And it's something within those alignment levels nearly every time. So there's yeah. no right or wrong. It's like, let's check our goals against alignment levels and see if we can get ourselves unlocked to make progress. Yeah. And like with the congruent issues, I, I don't know if it's the same with you, like with tacos and fitness, but for me with fitness and chocolate, I just, chocolate wins all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think I the key know. there is like... How do you defeat like the chocolate? <laughs> I think the key, is, like when you said that, made me think of the purgatory thing, where it's like either do eat the chocolate or don't, but like don't be somewhere in the middle being like, oh, I'm going to eat this, but I feel guilty for it. It's like do it and know the impact or don't, like don't be in that halfway bit in between. Which then leads to the not binary thing of like, I will accept one bar of chocolate a week. Yeah. And that's what it is. And that's fine, but we need to get out of purgatory um, where we like eat the chocolate and then punish ourselves for not going through on the goal. Yeah. And it's just not worth it. Either accept you're doing it or don't. And either are a great result. Yeah, I think one of my stories was all or nothing. So it's all the chocolate or no chocolate. <laughs> I can do either or, but yeah. I need to work on that story. A little bit of chocolate, more fitness. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you very much, guys. Simon as well and all the team. Been absolutely amazing. And uh, Simon, you're very thoughtful these days. Very wise. <laughs> I'm loving the calm. I'm loving the calmness and the words of wisdom. It's like it's very good. That's but what think... happens when you eat a little bit of chocolate, Paul. <laughs> I've got a full book a of bit, uh, wise notes now. Well, thank you very much, guys. <laughs> and Merry Christmas. I love that kind Merry of Christmas. That's Paul. like a really felt like a really backhanded compliment. Like, oh, Simon, you're actually you're actually quite wise, aren't you? I didn't really. I took it at that as well. <laughs> strange things that happened. It's the quiet. I am very watch, pleased to say that that and thank you, Paul. I'm very pleased to say that Simon didn't scare off Lisa. It was in fact her laptop battery, and we have her back. So I think. If Sandy, if that's okay, if we finish off with Nisa, yeah? Thanks, Sandy. And uh, Nisa, the entire world heard you swear as your battery <laughs> ran off. Uh, it did make us all laugh a huge amount. And then after we finished laughing, we were actually quite worried about yeah, you. Yeah, because you looked what really happened. You looked really like worried slash upset. I was so embarrassed. I was like, Simon probably thinks that I didn't know what to hear what he was saying. <laughs> Well, luckily, I know you, Nisa, and I, like I, I was less concerned because I, I had a feeling that you were okay. But it, you know, you did go in quite abruptly, and you did swear quite loud. Oh we enjoyed God. it. It's okay. And guess I don't what? Think I don't noticed, normally swear. I think it was just. Uh, I think it was just us that noticed. Nobody else did. But <laughs> Nisa, how much have you? Um, how much did you hear of what what I was saying before before we? we so. Dropped? 
so what what I did here is I heard you saying that um, it was it's selfish not to 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 help yeah. people. There was a bit but, of that. What else did you yeah. hear? I think that was that was the main thing that I heard is that. Um, that you went in some courses and you were uh, doing this trip coaching and stuff. And then, uh, and then, you know, that you thought uh, it was selfish not to help, even though yeah. you didn't have your shit together. Let me tell you what was the breakthrough, Nisa, and then I'm going to hand over to Alan and Katie who will help you with the belief stuff. And I'll probably chip in on that too. But the thing, the thing that changed it for me is I couldn't figure out, like I was in a bit of a basket case mode and outside of my coaching conversations, I was all over the place. But in the coaching conversations, like I was getting incredible results with people and they're having massive shifts. So I'm like, how does that even work if I outside of here? And then I went, oh, wait, because in those calls, I'm present. Yeah. So just because you've got like we've all got stuff going on in our lives that that doesn't prevent you from from, you know, surrendering yourself to service for someone else in that 30 minute 60 minute 90 minute window you can give all of yourself in those moments and actually what I discovered is when I realized that that was still possible I fully leaned into that at the end of a coaching session I come out of it go I feel really inspired like the the message that I've that I've helped this person to discover was exactly the message that I needed to hear for myself so I think you can you know it's not you know there's no overlap here you can you can be absolutely brilliant at one thing and then outside of that thing be struggling with stuff and that's okay but what I do know is you do have a gift you do have a gift of helping people in that way so so just get it out there Nisa and start getting paid for what you're able to do yeah so so the thing is that right now you know that I'm doing this the skincare stuff Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also it's also the natural way. My my ultimate dream is actually to have an alternative therapies resort with an a charitable organic form farming school attached to it. Got it. So um, so e even though the stuff that I'm doing is is okay, it's not totally like uh, I'm actually. Um, I was taught yoga from the age of about 12. So I actually gave a yoga session and I do meditation and all of that. And she said, she said to me that like, I, I always had a challenge charging for that because I was actually taught by- Hey, Nisa, Nisa, pause mom. there, pause there. I've got a thought for you because I think what you're about to do is to repeat the same story that you've been repeating to yourself all of these years. And that's the story that's holding you back from changing your belief. And that's the story that's holding you back from making progress. So I'm not going to entertain it, Nisa. I'm sorry. I'm okay. not going to let you say it. I'm going to interrupt okay. you. And then, and sorry, <laughs> with love. And I'm just going to invite Alan to jump in because I think there is part of the interrupt here is to go. There's another way of thinking about this that might help. Alan. Uh, yes. So you said, how do I believe it's possible? Uh, my first thought was you don't need to, you just need to take action towards it. So like, who cares if it's possible or not? Let's have a go. We won't know until we try. My second thought is, well, if that's what you want to achieve, well, let's do a mini experiment, find a resort, sell a retreat and see if we can get on the way to it. Like, and in the nicest possible way, like, what are you waiting for? Like, why are we messing around? Let's just try and sell something see if we can get towards it. And if we sell one and make some decent money, then we can run a second one. We can make some more profit. Then we can talk about getting to the next vision. But this is what happens. Every rebel business school is people go, I have this giant vision and less than I can do it all right now. It's not worth starting. And it's like, stop. You just have to start where you are with one small version and make progress. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. But that that alone is a bit scary, but you know. <laughs> and <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But yes, it makes sense. But I'm not going to do anything about it. <laughs> okay, I shall. I shall. You you oh. know I have to. I want to design my own resort. So I'll just have to use somebody else's resort initially to start, to start with. with. Okay. That will also teach you. Wow, what that was you in do. stereo. 
yeah. we spend a lot of time well, together. <laughs> this will also teach you what you want in your resort. If you use oh. other people's resorts to run it to start with, you will get all the lessons for what you do and don't want in your resort going forwards. But until you do that, like learn running stuff at other people's resorts and all the mistakes they've made spending millions doing it and then don't make them in your place. Make your place perfect. But you'll get there having you just need to start where you are with one small version. And I know it's scary, but until confidence sh shows up, let's take some action and see if we can sell it. Thank you very much. And I just want to thank you guys. I love you guys so much. All of you. Aww, I love you too, Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye, Lisa. Let's know Lisa. how you get on. And thank you for thank spending you. so much time with us today from having done like all five yeah, weeks. Yeah, all day, there. nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's intense. Uh, just before the next question, I would like to say that on YouTube, Kathleen Doran says she loves her certificate. So I love the fact she's already filled yes. out the feedback form and has got her certificate. She gets 10 points. Well, I have zero then. Thanks. I'm just here helping you out there, Alan. Are you comparing your pineapples? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I may be sitting on mine. It's a bit pokey. Okay. okay. <laughs> Next, we have the wonderful Sandy, who I am so excited to hear from again. And I'm also so happy that she has stuck through the course. Yes, me too. Welcome back, Sandy. Oh. Hey, Sandy. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? It wasn't letting me on me. We, we can hear you perfectly. Okay. All right. So my question is, what is the deal with the pineapples? <laughs> <laughs> So here, so here's the thing. It's not just from here because I used to work at a at a co-working space, and they had this thing about pineapples too. Oh. And so if it was just in the one place, I'm like, okay, you know, a group just decided pineapples were their thing. But this is like two completely disconnected from each other places. Is there just like something with pineapples that I just have not heard of? It's a sign, Sandy, and you were meant to be here. I don't, and for and for the record, I like canned pineapple better than fresh. Just the um, the the rebel pineapple came from when we ran the rebel finance school course, and we talked about don't compare yourself to other people. And we happened to use that picture. I used a picture of two different sized pineapples, um, and then it just became a thing. And then we found out that pineapples were a symbol of wealth in some countries. And it kind of stuck with the rebel finance school. Uh, and then like people kept saying, when are they going to mention pineapples again? Uh, and then one of the people on the course created a course bingo. Uh, and you had to tick it off when someone mentioned pineapples or Katie said, it's not binary or like all these like in jokes that happened. And it became the biggest thing in the finance school. And it just seemed to have stuck with us. Okay, yeah, the rebel school drinking game. I see. <laughs> It is a bit weird, Sandy. I like I do hear you. <laughs> also, a sign of hospitality as well in some yeah. countries, mm -hmm. and everybody's welcome. Okay, well, good Thanks, to Sandy. know. Okay. <laughs> good to see you. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks, Sandy. <coughs> and next we have terrific Thomas. Come on down. Ooh, I like your alliteration. <laughs> I like the alliteration. Hi, Thomas. Oh, you unmuted and then you muted almost immediately. We cannot hear you. Okay. Yay. Good hey, test. Thomas. Yeah, you're exactly right, Katie. That's exactly what I did. There. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where'd you go? Oh, no. It's okay, oh. Anita. We've got him. We've got him. I uh, just want to say thank you all. Thank you, Katie, Alan, Simon, all the help for elf. Thank you very much. Um, I was a bit inspired by the conversation we're having in the beginning of the call about traveling to different places. And those are some of the goals that I have. So I'm just curious, like, I guess the biggest blockers that I have for that are finding reasonably, reasonably priced places to stay for an extended period of time. Um, and also like the language barrier of the places that I wanna go. So I was just curious, how do y'all like, deal with that like finding places to stay at for a bit of time two weeks a month whatever and then just getting around um 
places that don't have maybe a big tourism spot, you know, maybe English isn't spoken that um, predominantly or whatever. So, yeah. With the language one, uh, Google Translate is your friend. It's amazing. And if you learn like one or two words of the plate, like maybe you learn how to say hello and thank you and you like go to someone and say hello in their language, they'll like, they'll love it you. It makes such a difference. And they'll just, oh, all you have to do is learn like a couple of words literally and they will, it it changes the whole experience. What did you learn in Swahili? Weweni Rafiki Lango Mazuri. You are my good friend. It was a bit creepy because I that's the first thing that I would say to people. <laughs> but, um people I was on people I was with on the trip with would like be like, oh wow, you speak Swahili. And I'd be like, I'm just repeating the same phrase over and over again. Um but, but it that created connections yeah. so quickly that made difference. So just learn a few words. There are places that it's easier. Our friends Christian and Bryce say that like Chiang Mai and Thailand is Asia light because more people speak English. Uh, it can get a bit overwhelming. I had one moment where I was in a, a food court. Nothing was in English. I had a bit of a meltdown and a sit on the floor because I couldn't. I was too hungry and I couldn't <laughs> work out what to eat. Um, so like it does happen occasionally, but you just need to breathe through it and you'll be fine. Um, and then the second piece about accommodation, is it a goda, a goba, a goda? Uh, yes, a goda for Asia. A goda where for is Asia. It? Where is it that you want to go? Yeah, Thomas? where do you want to go? Um, I want to go to like Mexico, Japan. Um, and Mexico is kind of easy. My partner's family was there. So like, I'm just going to stay with them. But like, if I want to go to Mexico City where they don't live, then you know, you got to find a place to stay. And there's there's cheaper ways of doing it. There's like the couch surfing type sites um, where people are really excited to host new friends. Um, yeah. Agoda in Asia is a great place to find uh, accommodation. Uh, we've just booked somewhere on the beach in Vietnam in Da Nang and it was like £800. It's like $1,000 for a month. Uh, and we're on the 34th floor overlooking the beach. Like different places around the world are so inexpensive. In Colombia, we generally booked on Airbnb or hotels.com or somewhere like that. Um, and sometimes hotels are cheaper than Airbnbs. And sometimes Airbnbs are cheaper than others. But you just need to get in there and have a look and you will find the perfect place. And then sometimes it's worth booking 10 days. If you're going for a month, book 10 days and then like find someone else when you're there, like look for the signs, look for different stuff where you're there. You might find a better neighborhood. So you can always book a small taster and then decide to go further, which we are very glad we did when we went to Uruguay. Uh, we booked 10 days and then we're like, we're done in three. Uh, so we left as quickly as possible, whereas we had the opportunity to stay longer if we wanted to. Sorry if anyone's from Uruguay. I did think as you said that, we like the whole swathes of Uruguayans are, are logging off. tuned out immediately. Um, you just didn't find the right bit, right? Yeah. Did that help at all, Thomas? Yeah, it did. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And I'm also going to check out the comments and uh, see what other people said. Yeah, there's always great comments. And uh, if you come to Asia, let us know. We're going there for the first three months of the year. All righty, will do. <laughs> and uh, I know the children's nursery rhyme, how much is that doggy in the window in seven different languages? So if you need any help with that in different countries, <laughs> say the word, Thomas, I'm your man. All good. <laughs> All right, I'll learn that nursery rhyme. I've never heard it before. <laughs> <laughs> You're missing out. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Bye. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks, Thomas. Oh my God, Alan, I have this vision of you um, just sat in the corner rocking yourself because you're so hungry. Um, I, I've so done that and I would do that. I have a picture in our kitchen that says constantly, and all it says, we just look at it, it says, I'm sorry for what I said when I was hangry. <laughs> uh, you don't want to see Alan when he's got low blood sugar. It's not a, it's not a pretty sight. And next we have Splendid Shaz. Hey, Shaz. Hey, Shaz. Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, firstly, I'd like to say this sounds very interesting, and unfortunately, I was very much unable to attend all of the week sessions. But I wanted to ask two questions. The first is, when will you be hosting the next one? 
And the second is, what piece of advice would you give me? Because I'm just, I'm 17, it seems the majority of your audience are very much more older than I am. Oh, wow. Uh, I love that. So on the next course, the answer is, I don't know. Uh, I'm currently excited to have a month off and chill after this. Um, Everything will stay on YouTube indefinitely so you can catch up on the weeks that you missed. Yes. So that's a good start. Uh, And you're 17. Wow. 17. You're so lucky that you're learning some of this stuff now. I'm sure there's people that are older on the call thinking, wow, if I was 17 learning this stuff, it would be so powerful to be able to implement it when you're young. Yeah. Uh, And like, I'm sure... Simon has got a thought for you as well, just to nail mine at the start. Uh, Anything is possible for you. You can create or do anything, but just be easy on yourself. You are so young. You have time. Allow yourself to try things, test things, experience things, do different things. Get out there and like test and try stuff and live life. You don't have to decide what you want to create yet. Your job is to experience and try things and get to know what you love, what you don't, what inspires you, what doesn't, and how it works. And give yourself permission to try as many things as possible when you're young and you can make big decisions later. Okay. Thank you. Jazz, oh we've goodness. met before, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Yeah, I remember as soon as you started talking, I'm thinking, oh, there's going to be two really difficult questions, at least two. (laughs) Because I remember, like, you practically uh, gave me, like, a Jeremy Paxman style interview, and it was brilliant. Uh, Do you know what I think? Like, the two things that jumped out for me number one is that you're already doing great things. You're showing up on things that most people in your peer group are not doing. So you're already taking those steps. You're already asking very difficult questions of people and putting them under pressure and getting them to give you good answers. So you're learning, you're soaking up new stuff all the time. I, I think Cassandra's written a really cool comment that you should check in the, uh, in the, in the chat in a moment. I guess like if I was at your age now, knowing what I know now, um, let go of the fact of trying to, you know, you need to know what you're going to be doing and have all your ducks in a row. Just let go of that. You don't need that. And, and it's just your best guess of what you want to try next. And I, I watched this video uh, a couple of years ago that it, I went, yeah, that's what I do. It's to, it's to find somebody that is already doing the thing that's your best guess of what you're interested in, what you're curious to learn more about, whether it's, you know, starting your own business or, or doing something in media or doing something in fashion or finance. It doesn't matter what it is. Find someone who's at the top of their game make a list of them and start pitching them and say, I want to come and work with you for the next three months. And you don't even have to pay me. I'm just going to come and work with you. And you're going to learn from some of the best in the game, whatever it is that you're into, invest three months of your life. And from that, the connections that you'll make, the stuff that you're going to learn and who knows where it's going to lead. Like, I think that's what I'd be doing if I was 17, something like that. Take jobs for what you can learn, not what you can earn at your age. And Alan said in one sentence what I said in about eight minutes. But nobody that's likes why I get, That's why I get paid the big bucks. <laughs> Wait. Katie's got something to say. I do have oh, something Katie, to say. Go for it. Um, Shaz, do you, are you familiar with the concept of compounding? Do you know what that means? Um, I did read it in Atomic Habits. Oh my goodness, you've read Atomic Habits. I love it. You're going to be dangerous. <laughs> the idea of compounding is that we always expect things like to go in a straight line, but they don't like, it looks like nothing's happening, but generally things, money, learning, improvements in life, they kind of look like nothing's happening and then do this big whoosh at the end. Um, And you're so young that you have time for that process to happen. And a few people put it in the chat and I'm going to push our own course, but like come on rebel finance school next year, because knowing like you're in a position that you can have, good money habits early you might not be in a position maybe you're not earning anything yet to be able to like do what we talk about but like having the knowledge and being able to implement it when you are ready I think would be amazing and your money will just go like this 
Ooh. Yes, and don't be expect to be a millionaire by 18. <laughs> You're going to have to like do the stuff over a period of time for it to compound. Don't be like me when I'm like, ah, none of this is working after three days and I get stroppy and then give up. Like you just need to keep going positively over time. And it's unbelievable where you get to. Great to see you, Shaz. Nice to see you too. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Shaz. Shaz, I'm already so impressed by you, and I don't I know, right? Like, oh my gosh, I can't even remember what I was doing at 17, but it's probably not appropriate for this. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, but yeah, Shaz, but hurry up and finish education, and then I think we should have a conversation about you coming to work at Rebel. I think that's what we need to do. Yeah. But anyway, sorry, Anita, please go ahead. So next we have Tofu Allen. Oh, is that? And too... hopefully he's got a question for Taco Allen. Is that to distinguish from? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm glad we've cleared that up. <laughs> yeah, I've been. Well, I'm. Uh, I was glad to meet the, another Allen. So, but I've been vegetarian my whole life. So all my friends called me Tofu, and so I adopted that. That became a moniker. So I'm Tofu Allen in most social media. Well, I'm glad <laughs> to see that you spell your name correctly as well. Yes. I know. I, I was glad to see Alan's name spelled correctly. <laughs> <well. laughs> and I, I'm sorry I missed you when you were in Los Angeles. I just found the link and you had just been here and I missed you guys. Oh, yeah. but, uh, I was really yeah. excited to be on this course. So a big thank you. And I do apologize for missing the last two weeks. But that was due to some knowledge that I learned from the, the, the uh, Rebel Entrepreneur School. So and I took my, I was able to take my girlfriend on a 12 day cruise and then we went to Disney World. And that's because of my mentality change. So, unfortunately, internet is very bad on a cruise ship. So, I missed the last two Mondays. So, I apologize. Um, You're living I your dreams. Did... Never apologize for going out and living your dreams. Love it. Oh, yeah. And it's great. I, it's been wonderful because now my girlfriend, as she has a traditional job, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. But she's, uh, I've introduced her to this program and we've been watching it together. So I, I watch you guys and then we watch the video again. All <laughs> So I get to see it twice, which, which helps me because I'm a, I'm a slower learner than she is. Um, but I'm excited to go through the class with you. And I just wanted to kind of say uh, the advice you just gave. I, in 2016, I took an unpaid job in the merchant services industry just to learn the business so I could start my own brokerage. And I started it on March 2020, just in time for a pandemic. And then I got very depressed. <laughs> then I found you, Alan, in your podcast, and I was able to, it got me out of my slump. And now I'm, re, I'm focused on relaunching here in 2023. And I did it so I could be, uh, I'm active here in North America, including UK and Australia. So I'm very excited. So I don't know if I have a question per se, but I think the biggest thing is maybe what, if starting a new business, where is the best way to find customers? So, uh, I love that question, and yeah, there is no direct difficult. answer. Mm. There's no direct answer because it is what type of customers do you want? And then once we define what type of customers you want, the question becomes where do they hang out? And that might be physically, virtually, whatever. And then it's how do we go and get those ideal customers for you? Part of it, though, is we don't know who an ideal customer is until we've got a bunch of customers. So at the start, you just need to go out and try and get a bunch of customers. Then you'll know yeah. which ones you like and which ones you don't. And then we can focus on getting you more of the ones you like. Um, so it's very much a process of mini experiments and marketing experiments to start with to define this stuff. Um, and you just take your best guess and let's start at it. That would be my like super quick answer because there is no, I wish I could say directly LinkedIn sales <laughs> yeah. strategy, listen to the Patrick yeah. Venn episode and do that, but we don't know who you're targeting. Um, and that then yeah. will define what the best way to do it is. Okay. One bit to add for me, uh, Alan, the, the stuff that most people miss and they don't because what Alan said is exactly right. Going through the process of trying to get customers teaches you who your customers are, you know, that process. So I think the, the step that most people skip is is the soft pitch step, which basically means friends, family, 
former co-workers, people that we went to school, college, university with, people that are connected to your your partner's parents, your own parents, your own family. Like basically you sweat the network and say, hey, I'd, can I just borrow you for 15 minutes? I just really want to test the pitch before I launch it to the market. I'd love to get your feedback. And from that process, you'll get customers or introductions. And I think lots of people miss that bit out. Do that bit because you'll get to where you need to get to quicker. Yeah, that I did exercise this on the cruise. So I was, I was meeting international people, nice. people from all over. Uh, I do like the poker table. So that's a lot of conversation. So I usually <laughs> say, oh, you have a business? Well, what I do is I help businesses save money on their credit card processing. In fact, I've saved people usually an extra 0.5%. Are you interested in me sending you some info? Nice. I'm interested. I'm, I'm interested. Well, I'll send you I'll send you some info. <laughs> I'm seriously interested. I, interested. I hate credit card fees. So yes, please, oh. Tofu Allen, send us details. I definitely will. And one of the reasons I started, I have a nonprofit that's uh, called Burrito Project, where we serve burritos to the homeless here in Los Angeles and Skid Row. We're doing wow. it this week. We're making a thousand burritos on Thursday and wow. we take them to Skid Row with usually 2000 bottles of water and clothing and blankets. And wow. this has been a passion project of mine for 16 years. And we needed credit card uh, like donations. And I did not want to see all that money going to them. So I created the brokerage basically to save myself money uh, or save the nonprofit money. So oh, my goodness. It's kind of all that is passionate. incredible. That's and one wild. last little thing I built and based on listening to your podcast, what I did was we now donate 20% of uh, our profits to, uh, to, we do have two funds, a local nonprofit and then a nonprofit fund. So the client gets to pick their own nonprofit and we donate to them 10% of whatever they've created and generated goes back to their nonprofit of choice. So, wow. I love I know, that. I, it took me two years to figure this out by listening to you and Simon and, and Katie and, Thank you so much. So I'm really excited. To Alan, please pop a link in the chat. Can you? I think people will be interested to chat that out. Oh, yeah. For Burrito it. Project, I'll put yeah, that yeah. in right now. And I'll put my other side. I'm still working on the website, but I will have it up and ready very soon. Awesome. And if we come back to LA, can we come and help make burritos? Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. I love to cook. One might fall into my mouth as it as it happens. Oh no! Uh, that's the thing that has to happen. We encourage um, product testing to make sure it's the best product possible. <laughs> You're trying to stop me from eating. Oh, that was my job. Oh, <laughs> so, awesome. Uh, well, thank you again. Thanks. Thank Alan. you, Alan. You are a legend. I feel inspired. <laughs> yeah, me too. Thanks so much, Alan. That's amazing. I, I want to go do that. And I wonder if he makes tofu burritos. Uh, you know, so. actually, we do have vegetarian burritos. Uh, they've been vegetarian, which is pretty. And it actually works out best for our, our local health department because many of the homeless, you know, when we think of what do I do with food I have left over, I put it in my refrigerator. Uh, people on the streets don't have that. So we make uh, beans, rice, salsa, um, you sometimes fresh veggies donated from our local uh, local uh, gardens, and then uh, so they're all vegetarian. They don't spoil as fast. They, fast. So some people take them as a breakfast burrito because we deliver in the evening too. So, um, but yeah, I do appreciate your time and thank you so much. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Oh, I could so eat a burrito, and it's what almost 11 p.m. Okay, <laughs> so next we have Karen Watson. Hi, Hello. Karen. Hi. I've got Hi. to follow the burritos. Mine's probably not quite as exciting as that. Well, are that's fine. Are you comparing? Sure <laughs> are you comparing? Uh, yeah, I've got so much going on in my head, and I want to try and be concise about it, and I, I'm probably not going to be. But so my number one goal for this year coming has to be to, to get – all of my debts cleared off and really to stop living payday to payday because we're constantly going into the red, having to bail ourselves out, going back in um, and had a bit of a history of sort of burying my head in the sand and just not looking at what's going on. Um, so yesterday, myself and my partner sat down and, and, you know, bit the bullet really. And actually, it turns out the situation's not quite as bad as what we thought it was so I've managed to pay off quite a lot of the stuff that I thought I still had so we're kind of getting sorted and taking steps in that 
area. Um, I actually posted in the Facebook group and Simon responded with a really helpful response actually and it was about my business which I set up um, after doing the Rebel Business School. So I make dance costumes and tutus. I remember, yeah. And my, my question was about sort of um, how do I stop being a busy fool and put my prices up and having the confidence and self-belief to do that. So um, I, I am getting booked up. So I'm, I'm fully booked up until February. Um, but my fear is about losing those customers that I've got when I do put my prices up. And I, I don't know what it is that's holding me back, if I'm honest. Because um, I know that there's people in my area that charge a lot more than I do for sometimes not even as good a product, really. Go on, then. I, I had a couple of thoughts. Uh, number one, you will lose some customers. And you just need to get used to that. And that's okay. Uh, there are some customers who will not pay that much. Yeah. Uh, and that's part of life. Number two... The interesting thing you will find is that when you increase your prices, quite often you get nicer customers. And yeah. there is this thing that people who pay less don't value it as much mm -hmm. and they give you more shit because yeah. they don't value it as much. Yeah. So by yeah. putting your prices up, it will change the customers you get. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, my, my customers that I do have are lovely, I have to say. Um, and I'm not, I'm not the cheapest by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I know that I'm well trained. And, and so if you buy a tutu from me, it could be worn by someone in the Royal Ballet because it's the same standard. Whereas a lot of other people are using a lot, you know, the, the materials are, are not as good. And um, I just need to try and position my business to be, um, what's the word, not more professional, but higher end, if you like. Do you tell people that about the quality of the tutus? I I put a post out because I, I um, Simon suggested that I say that the prices are going up from next year and you've got until like two weeks into January to benefit from this year's prices, which I did. Um, and in that post, I did mention it, but it's not something that I've sort of, it's probably a blink and you'd miss it post on my social media. I think that should be front and centre. Like the quality is the same you will find in the Royal Ballet. Like yeah. this is not just this, this is this. And that's one of the things people do to create credibility in the marketplace. And you'll notice it. We do it on our websites. We do like as seen in these things. Or when I was running training courses, like you would always say, like, oh, okay, Alan has run training courses for Microsoft, Pepsi, Google, and you list the companies you've worked for. Yeah. That's what builds the credibility. And people go, wow, if they have worked for X, they must be good. So if you can do that, you will build incredible credibility and people won't blink at the price uh, when you do put your prices up. Um, and I think. A lot of it is just the fear of, will I lose customers? That's the biggest thing. And yeah. just embrace you will lose some and do it anyway, because yeah. you will win others. There are people who will not buy it because they think, why is it so cheap? If she does it for the yeah. Royal Ballet and she charges that, like, that's yeah. wrong. Like, I won't buy that. It's too cheap. So, yeah. like, put your prices up and inspire some more people who are different to buy from you. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, and blame see. the government, Karen. <laughs> well, it's true, isn't it? It's well, true. It's, yeah, it's not even like we're making it up, is it? It's not even me going, oh, well, it's because of, yeah, it's because of that. It, it did actually happen. It has happened. It is happening. And yeah. everyone else and their cat are putting up their prices. Yeah. And I think I think there's nobody thinking about uh, the pricing of your uh, of your work in the same way that you are. No, no one's giving oh, it a I second don't. thought. They're looking at the price so. and they're going... Okay, that's the price. I'm either going to buy it or I'm not. And yeah. you've also got customers in the chat, a potential customer in the chat as well. <laughs> Don't have to dance where if anyone's looking. <laughs> okay, please oh, yeah. put your link uh, link yeah. to your social media or your website in the chat, Karen. I, I will. Thank Anna you. Anna is interested. 
and I'm not even going to charge you commission for helping you find the sales. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, Karen, just get on with it. Do it. Yeah. Just do it. Well, you've yeah. already taken the step, haven't you? But you're still a little bit nervous about it, but you've got yeah. work until February. So you, that's, that's two extra months to do lots more promotion. Yeah. Just in case. Exactly. Just yeah, in case. I'm really busy up until then. So um... that's a sign that you need to put your prices up. Yeah, well, actually, I've turned I've turned one away as well that I didn't want to do and couldn't really fit in for February. So, yeah, and I tell other people this as well. So I don't know why I don't listen to myself. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen if you did, Karen? Well, uh, I don't I don't know. I, I, it's a mindset thing. That's all it is. Um, I mean, I'm I'm incredibly introverted, and I've worked really hard to kind of get this far. Um, I don't like talking about money. I don't like speaking to people I don't know. Um, so I've got where I am with the help of the Rebel Business School, actually. Um, so I'm, I'm working on it. Just breathe your way through it, Karen. You've done amazing. Like, honestly, for someone yeah. that doesn't like talking to strangers, like you're you're doing a Zoom call with over 100 people at the moment, by the way. Yeah, I don't know how many people are. Nice, very well. yeah. <laughs> I can only see Just like us. That. Just us. It's just us. Sorry, did I well, say we're that still strangers. Loud? I was supposed to say yeah. that out loud, was I? Yeah, well, my heart was beating a bit faster. <laughs> Take a deep breath, Karen. You're doing really well. Yeah. I just need to um, get over myself, I think, stand in my way. I think yourself is doing just fine. Yes. I think just believe in yourself, back yourself like we do, and let's go for this and do it and make it happen. And yeah. I think just from being brave and speaking up, you've got at least two leads in the chat, one from Portia and one from Anna. So like they want to, they're interested. So That's Mark yeah. sorted. <clears throat> yeah, you do know that my prices are going up though. So yeah. <laughs> I they don't know that, what they so. were before. Well, well don't they have a week to be able to buy at the old prices? They yeah. do, yes, they do. <laughs> thanks, Karen. Thank Let us know what happens. Let I will know. do, thanks. Bye. Bye, Bye. Thanks, Karen. And just Can I just daughter is in dance class and all the prices of the costumes i'm based in surrey they are very high so i, don't, yeah. I think they, you could just be in line with they everything. are and, and do you know what dance families spend so much money on dance and i know that my daughter dances um so i'm and i'm not my ideal customer i know that because i made my daughter's tutu rather than buying a one because i thought well that's a bit expensive yeah um, but yeah, I'm not no. a customer. I, I definitely agree with Katie and Alan. It is about your branding in that story that you said. That should be at the forefront of everything about your branding and website. Talk to someone when you're networking. Don't even think about the prices. Tell them why you're amazing and really yeah. pay about your business and what separates you before the money talk, before the deal even happens, before they even say they're interested. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get on that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good luck, Karen. Thank you. Bye. Anita, just are we waiting for Simon? Yeah. We're not waiting for Simon. He just went to get water. Um, just there's one question in a chat I wanted to just nail really quickly. Rosemary said, Hi, Alan, Katie, and Simon. One question. I want to start my balloon decoration business, but I'm afraid to offer my service since I finished my course last Monday and I don't have any experience. Uh Rosemary. You finished a course, you've learned how to do it, you have some experience. So let's just get one customer and it doesn't have to be a multi-million pound wedding you do for your first one. Just get one small customer and do a test and see how it goes and just do it. And you will get the experience from doing it one customer at a time. Simon and I did not know categorically that we could run a two week business school when we first pitched it. Uh, I sold it and well, we sold it together. We went down to Western Mississippi Mayor and sold it together. And we just went, we are going to give this everything. And we did our best. And that's what will get you through it. So just do it, sell the first one and do your best. And if it goes wrong, then make it up and do, do it. Like if you've got a good heart, you will make it happen. Good enough is good enough. And you can get paid whilst you learn how to get better. <laughs> That's what I loved about, about what happened. Yes. 
Okay, Anita, sorry to interrupt. And also, thank you. No. Uh, another service offered by our extraordinary helper was he got some water. Love you, Tony. <laughs> you basically have your own little servant there right now. <laughs> this is where I'm going wrong, isn't it? Yeah. Time to make some burritos after or tacos. Okay, next we have Ayana Florian. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. It's uh, firstly, I would like to thank you <laughs> for mm. these tours. And um, well, when I started it, my intention was to learn how to improve, you know, how to make my business working better. And uh, at the beginning of November, I again, overworked myself and overstressed myself and I got the anxiety attacks, which a year ago, exactly in the December, I got to the hospital, I thought I would die. <laughs> and through a year, I tried to properly heal myself, but I always put everything up front, not myself at the first place. And um, so I, w I made myself better. And then again, I worked more. And <laughs> so it was up and down, up and down all the time. And this time, you know, two weeks ago, I just decided to get help from other professionalists, from herbal clinic, from chiropractic, you know, to I'm holistic therapist, you know. So I was thinking I can help properly myself. But sometimes it's great to get some extra advice. Even if you have to pay for that, but because NHS is. <laughs> They're trying their hardest. They try, yes. But, you know, I, I was waiting a year for a um, neurologist <laughs> meeting. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I, I don't, you know, I, I know it's, it's how it is. So but I made the decision just to bring some savings, you know, and just put myself at first, you know, in the first place. And I, I I, think that, you know, your course helped me to make that decision. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for that. But yes, last week I had three sessions, two chiropractic, one, three hours with herbal doctor, which was amazing. And then <laughs> on Friday evening, I got terrible message. <laughs> Terrible message. I, I'm I'm organizing the art exhibition in one month in Swansea in Volcano Theater. And everything was planned for since a year. And we had the agreement that I hire the space of art gallery. And I can do my exhibition and workshops for people, like you know, meditation workshops, just basically helping people how they can relax. And the manager of that place just wrote me that we, we've been some misunderstanding between us and I'd have to pay him extra eight, over 800 pounds. <laughs> because he said that I don't hire the floors, only the walls. So I can't do my workshops there. And I was like, my heart was like, <laughs> what he's talking about, you know, on my agreement is exhibition and workshops and the price is under it so you know it took me all weekend to consult my agreement with uh with some other people but i i just noticed that i've made that many times before you know i i was scared inside when someone attacked me yes uh, from different, you know, I, I don't say maybe he made a mistake. Yes, I don't want to like fully blame him. Maybe he just made the mistake, you know, but it's my inner reaction. And um, when you make the business, sometimes you just you are there, you know, and you have to confront yourself with other people's. How they react to this, what you do, you know, they are they have rights to say they, they they don't like something yes or that we make the mistakes and actually here's my questions how do not take it so personally <laughs> what people say <laughs> that it makes you you know 
anxiety attacks. <laughs> mm. Lots of stories in there, Ayana. I know. <laughs> I don't know, like the thing that just jumped out at me as you were talking is that you already know, you have the wisdom already. You know what you know what the next step is. Yeah, but probably, you know, I went through many years of domestic abuse by myself. I stay alone with two kids and um, I always was fighting. And I think like my herbal doctor told me that I have that emotional habit logically i know you know how to how everything works but emotionally is there so maybe i just should stop for a year just maybe do the you know just constant like meditations affirmations visualizations to change that habit Whew, just don't concentrate too much maybe on work just maybe make a pause you know just to put myself first i just decided to share my experience with other people because maybe there is someone there who needs this kind of advice <laughs> or see that it. they're not alone i felt so alone for a long time i was so ashamed to share my experience because you know you are holistic therapist other people can blame you oh you're not perfect <laughs> as um or yeah it's difficult ayana i i wouldn't want you to breathe more um, I'm going to pass you to Alan, who's got something that he wants to share, but I would like you to see, just, just take a deep breath for a moment. I really like Simon's Breathe More because I can feel your energy and your voice goes up when you're talking about it. And when you breathe, you come back down and that will help you to do what I'm going to do next, which is to recommend you've got to stand up for yourself. And this person may or may not be a bully. They may just like be trying to do what they want to do. They may have had another booking come in and they're like, well, we can sell the space to this person and get more money because I'm going to tell her this. Who knows what happens, but we have to stand up to them. We have to say it's unacceptable and we have to put ourselves in a position of power and say, no, the agreement says this. That's not what I've signed. Are you going back on the agreement? Yes, and then yes. stay quiet and breathe and stay in our position of power. And it's a tough thing to do to stand up to people, but you've done it before. You have it with inside yourself and I know you can do it. And when you actually do it and stand there and like say, this is not acceptable to me. We had an agreement for this. Look, here's the wording. I feel like you're changing my agreement and you have to like stay strong against this because people sometimes like, I would say that 97% of people are good, but there's the 3% of people who will try and get what they want at the cost of everyone else. And sometimes they need standing up to. And if you stand up to them, you're protecting other people who don't have the strength you have. And I do it. I go, I'm going to stand up to these because it's not right. And you have the power. You know the words. You just need to breathe and do it. And the one thing I would say, the quicker you do it and get it over and done with, you're voting for your identity as someone who is strong and stands up for themselves. And it's over. And you can make a decision whether to move forward or whether they are reneging on it or what you want to do about it. Or if it's like who actually owns the space and go above them to the manager, go above them to who else. You can decide, but we have to just take the action quickly so this doesn't ruminate inside you and we can get out of this loop and move on. I, I wrote email, like really try to be calm. <laughs> And I wrote already email to that that man, and so but probably I hope that he will write me soon back and try to really breathe a lot. Don't don't be afraid to get the answer even because I know that I'm right. I consulted that with some other people. Um, yeah. <laughs> Call them as well. Like 
email is the worst way to dis- to solve a disagreement because it can be misread. People add their own tone to an email that you've written a nice yes. one and they add a weird tone and then they get angry with you. Email is the worst tool to sort out problems. I would say even though you've sent an email, call them tomorrow and just say, look, we need to chat this through. We need to come to some kind of agreement and work out what to do. Um, yeah, just ring them. The phone is a far better method. I will. Thank you. <laughs> or right even start, better. Anna, you said the word. Oh, sorry, Katie, go ahead. I was just going to say, if it's someone local, you could go and speak to them in person, and that's probably even better than the phone. Yes, yes, definitely. I, I can go to the office, yes, the, and, and, and speak. And get them in a headlock like this. No, I'm just kidding. That Don't do that. <laughs> um, I noticed right at the start you said the word attacked. And it made me think what we often do is that if we experience something difficult that happened in our lives, the moment something looks and feels and sounds like it might be something similar, we attach the same response to all of those other things that when they happen again and yeah. again. And it, and it just made me think, and you already know this because your wisdom also said, oh, um, you said something like uh, maybe it was a mistake. So you know this. I think the important bit is that you don't feel like this the whole weight of this thing yeah your simple misunderstanding and i think yeah. alan's advice is excellent definitely call and katie what katie said definitely go down there if you can and you know what what you allow you say is okay you know what you permit you promote yes. and i think i think i love the fact that you've written the guy an email already like stay in that stay in that conversation and hold that space for you thank you um Katie, can I just tell you something? You, you mentioned that uh, you want to learn Polish. I, it's beautiful language. I'm po- from Poland. Nie mówiłem po polsku. Tak. Ucz się polskiego. It's really beautiful language. Learn Polish. <laughs> I'm excited to learn some Polish. You go to Poland now? We're thinking of going in the summer. In the warmer weather. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you so much. Thanks, thank Diana. Thanks, Diana. Nice talk Thanks, to Diana. you. Thank Let you. us know how you get on. I just want to say, I think it's really interesting as well that this guy has chosen to email you to tell you this instead of calling you, seeing a mm-hmm. customer. And I think that shows a bit about maybe motives. I mean, in, in, in by you taking that next step of, meeting him face to face or calling him it may actually catch him off guard which will probably be a good thing thank you or in the power stand but good luck and yet other people said put in the facebook group what happens i think we're all on edge we want to know we want to know in this situation <laughs> so please let us know that and thank you i will <laughs> thank you bye Ayana. next we have lovely Lindsay Reeve. Thank you for waiting. Hey, Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. Hello. Um, I think my question is, what if you're just too much of a rebel and you seem to be your own worst nightmare? <laughs> have you? Let me introduce you to my friend, Alan. <laughs> 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 what do you mean by that, Lindsay? What's what's on your mind? Uh, I just I just always seem to get it wrong. I'm either too timid or too fierce, <laughs> um, too controversial or not forward coming enough. I just yeah. I don't know um, why. And what do you mean? Do you mean in 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 career or business or life? Everything, or... everything at the moment. Um, I think mostly in business. Uh, I used to be such a confident, outgoing person. Um, I got married, had children. Um, It turned out to be quite a controlling, abusive relationship. And it just kind of altered my personality. And I still, it's weird. It's like I I was in a coma. I know the person I was before. I kind of know who I am now, but with my children as a mom. But there's like this big bit in the middle and the two... I can't link the two. I can't. I can't link to this confident, 
person that I was before to who I am now and I don't know nothing's quite working Go on. I had a thought which my main thought is we need to let go of the past and create from where we are now yeah. so I think maybe you're trying to reconnect with what happened in the past and I think I would say remember that past person fondly and you can draw on their resources and you can think yeah. about what they would do but actually what we need to do is go I'm a different person I've had different experiences I can build from here so I would say let's stop going backwards and let's help you create the version of Lindsay that you want to create from here because you've got an incredible opportunity you can create whoever you want to create. You can be whoever you want to be. So let's build from here uh, and choose who you want to be going forward. And then let's start voting for that identity through our actions and building the whatever the version is you want to build going forwards. Does that make any kind of sense? Yeah, it completely makes sense. I just kind of, I don't know. I don't know if I'm self-sabotaging. I just kind of, yeah, I seem to... Most of us do, Lindsay. Port road, ...but kind of find it funny to go down it at the same time. I, <laughs> I'm that person. Most of us do <laughs> self-sabotage. Don't worry, you're not alone in that, case, in that sense. Um, I love what Alan said, and I think the... The bit that I would add to that is um, I'm sorry that you went through that stuff. I'm not because it's, you know, it's like diamonds are formed under pressure, aren't they? So, well, I think that's the bit where my head went and, and, and how, how much of that, because I think, I think you understand that and intellectually you go, yeah, that's a great, that's a great story to tell. But also, if you're trying to link back to something that happened before then, it's sort of devaluing the woman that you've become as a result of those experiences and the strength that you have. So I'm kind of going, I'm kind of seeing like the Lindsay that's shown up today. Man, she's tough. <laughs> right. So why would I want to channel some kind of past version? Like Alan said, like there's probably some good things there that you could go Hey, what would young Lindsay have done in this situation? Well, maybe she would have done this, but... I think I was yeah. very extroverted when I was younger and I look like an extroverted person, but I'm really kind of not. But the business that I'm doing, like you kind of need to be quite a strong person with it. It's kind of very Marmite. And... Uh I would just say that I think whoever convinced us about introverted and extroverted has spun one of the biggest <laughs> bullshit stories of history. Sold a lot of books, though. I sold a lot of books. Incredible story, and it's absolute rubbish. There are people that, like the introverted, extroverted they thing, they say, oh, you're extroverted if you get energy when you're around other people, and you're introverted if like you lose energy around other people or you get energy from being on your own. own yeah like there are people who suck the life out of me and i want to run and hide that doesn't mean i'm introverted it means they're not the right people for me or i've not worked out how to interact with them and there's other people who i could just spend all my time with and lift me up and i think there's some stories here that the world has told us all that you need to let go of and just be you. And there'll be some people you connect with and there will be some people you don't. And the ones yeah. you don't can jog on. <laughs> and the ones you do, then that's great. You can find a way to work with them, have fun, create value. You yeah. do not have to please everyone. Um, and you shouldn't try to because it's the biggest path to unhappiness. Well, that's how you end up pleasing no one, isn't it? Yeah, and upsetting yourself because you try and please everyone and it's like a path to nothing. So I think there's some some stories that the world has spun that aren't helping you and don't help any of us. Uh, and I'd love you to put those down and just 
focus on creating the version of you that you want to create and being you. I really like that. That kind of links into something that I said as a joke to a friend the other day. I was always, even in, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm 40 now, but throughout high school and everything, I was the goth kid. <laughs> I was always the little goth girl. And I made a joke the other day. I was just like, oh, I can't stand this Wednesday series on Netflix that everybody's talking about. So I've got people that haven't spoken to me in like 26 years that are suddenly contacting me on Instagram going, I remember you, you were the goth kid from school. I've just watched Wednesday and it's reminded of me of you. I'm like, it's taken me 26 years to finally be popular. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for my time. Me too. It's coming. <laughs> you got to read Cassandra's comment. Go up the chat in a second and read Cassandra's comment. Please. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And lots of people are saying, what, 40? You don't look it. No one said that when I said I was 44. So uh, you're doing well. I'm Natural comparing well. pineapples. But I can frown and everything. It's not artificial. <laughs> no Botox here. <laughs> <laughs> just like you've got to just be you be your extraordinary version of you and connect with who you connect with and if you can find congruency that way you don't have to please everyone it's okay just be you and go out and live your life thank you that resonated with the business course that you did that that hit me like really hit me I think building what Alan said like it sounds like you're second guessing yourself you're like oh sometimes I'm like to this and to that whereas if you're just you then you'll know and it will feel right it sounds like you're trying to figure out what you're meant to do rather than just being you I think so yeah because I, I started the business the rebel business course and my business idea was what I thought would be good and would work kind of and I it wasn't something I actually felt comfortable with doing, but through going on the business course and kind of listening to, to what you guys are saying and things really hitting me and like, you know, the, the, the rebel thing obviously was close to my heart. And what I've ended up doing is I would never in a million years have thought of it. It's still within like a, a florally arty industry, <laughs> but I know ne like never in a million years thought that what happened would happen. And for some reason is working. <laughs> And I, I absolutely love it. I was doing, I wanted to do workshops for bridal flowers so brides could design their own bridal bouquets. And now I'm doing um, floral taxidermy. Wow. <laughs> that's genius. And if you love it, do it. I think that's awesome. I don't really love taxidermy at all, but I don't know. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> it just did. It just did. It just happened. I got asked to, to restore this thing with some flowers in it, and then somebody else asked me. And, and That's what I call niche. That's yeah. definitely a Freaking niche. love one. it. That's where your power is, Lindsay. Like, this is a question for you. You don't have to answer it now, and, but just something to reflect on. What do you need to do to really lean into the woman that you're becoming? I need to get through the difficulty of finally getting free of the ex-husband, I think. He's making life very hard. And uh, currently being dragged through financial court and family court. Okay, you got some support? Nope. <laughs> no, my family are Catholic. So as soon as I stood up and said, I don't want to meet with this man, he, like, he's going to hurt the children eventually, not just me. Everybody turn their back on me. Everybody. Lindsay, I'll message you privately on in the Zoom chat. Look out for a message. I'm going to pop a link in there of someone that you can talk to for some support. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Thanks for your question. Truly believed in like helping people. You're welcome. They wouldn't have done that. But anyway, yes. Look out for what Simon said. Thank you ever so much. That's really appreciated. Thank but you for being brave and talking to us. You're awesome. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. You're awesome. You're gorgeous. And you're a super. And you will do it. And you will get Stranger it. than usual. Yeah. No, <laughs> you're amazing. That's why you fit in here. Yeah. Wednesday has got nothing on you, okay? So. <laughs> 
and thanks for sharing. <laughs> Thank you ever so much, guys. Thank you. Well, next we have Sally May. Sally May. The one and only. The legend. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for this wonderful course. I can't tell you how much you've changed my life this year. Yeah. Um, the first thing I wanted to say is Koham Che in Polish. Koham Che, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> and Simon. <laughs> love you more. Um, it's fantastic. Um, very quickly, because I know that there are people waiting, obviously, and it's getting late now. Um, I just want to say from back at the very start of the um, pop-up business school, before all the Rebel Business School came about, the one tip that I took away was tip number 12 on your list, which was everything you wish to achieve is outside your comfort zones. And I took that away with me and I've been trying to work on that. And this year, because of your expertise and everything else, I will tell you that you have completely transformed everything about my life, literally. I've managed to transfer all my pension funds now to Vanguard. <laughs> that were There was about seven of them and they're all over. I've even managed to do it for my other half. And I've spent... 15 Mondays of this year on your courses. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, we love it. I think, you, it's lovely. May, I, think, I think you came to the bonus workshop we did as well, right? The so that's 16, 16 Mondays. Yeah, maybe, yeah, it might have been more than that, actually. But, yeah, that's why I wanted to tell everybody that what you are teaching everybody, although it, you can't see the steps to start with, it actually does work because I've made it work and I found out that things can change in little bite-sized pieces. And I don't know if everyone knows, but I'm also a carer for my disabled partner who's got mega limitations. And because people, you know, keep you, you get invites to things and you want to go and you want to do this, but I've actually constructively used the time to put into every day you know like minuscule the compound effects trying to do things you know create the gap you know make things happen and all of that is like coming out now down the line you think all oh, that that effort was definitely worth it and that's what I wanted to say and even down to last week for his homework <laughs> I've got to say, big up to Simon for the bees. <laughs> you know, I thought that was absolutely awesome analogy because I never thought of it about it from that perspective before. And it's exactly right because the more you think about, you know, you're going about your daily things, all the things you have to do, all the negative stuff that crops up, you think, how am I going to get through that? All these things are just challenging day in, day out, you know, the same things you're trying to do. You think, well, how did I change getting to have time to come on a course every week? Well, you just have to fit things in and we, you, you when you put those deadlines that's what actually happens because I've had to like do batch cooking to make this possible so that I can free up the time to be on the course do you see what I mean just little tiny things I've saved energy from doing that because I haven't got my cooker on all the time if you do a bigger batch you can obviously save my I'll put my order in Sally yeah you can <laughs> You know, I keep getting people asking me to make homemade Thai green curry, but because <laughs> <laughs> I've got about 50 ingredients and it takes me about three hours just to do the chopping up and putting it all together. But it's all worth it. But I just wanted to say realistically that your voice and the bees that are disappearing out of my head. They are making me calmer and I seriously cannot thank you enough because you're just like angels in disguise. So I just wanted to put that out to everybody and oh, the fact that all the resources, everything. I can't get to do it all like I'd like to, but I have got a big journal. I'm doing my homemade templates like you, you know, putting up on the screen to, to use. And I've got a display book now. With some of those in so that I created something out of this to 
to help me so that for quickness I can put it into categories and slots and I'm, oh yeah that's that that's that that's that and that's all working for me so I just want to say thank you a million or a gazillion because oh, <laughs> uh, you're awesome and I really hope everyone has a wonderful Christmas uh, I spent Saturday 65 presents wrapping them up because that's the only day I had to do it so <laughs> <laughs> I've done it you're, Sally. <laughs> you're wonderful Sally you thank to, you to do these things when you have to do them so yeah I just want to say thanks very very much and well done to everyone who's been on the course because you are awesome too <laughs> yeah. so thank you for coming and the, all the lovely energy that you bring and anytime that you come on and ask a question it's always you always just so positive and it's it's yeah, lovely to be around because you've helped me with that honestly from negative situations you couldn't never see the wood for the trees could you sometimes you're in the thick of it and you just can't see your way out of it but like you've taught eat the frogs <laughs> 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 i'm eating the frogs and that day that you actually was on the course with a, with a one in it like a jar ready to go out to the car i nearly had a meltdown <laughs> I hope, I hope I'm going to go meet a frog. <laughs> <laughs> I've met a few, in my, you know, since then. In <laughs> metaphorically, I should say. So, yeah, I've eaten quite a few now. So I just want to say thank you very, very much. <laughs> yeah, and all the very best. And 2023 is going to be the year. So thank you very much. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Sally. And just remember, you're the one who took action and did it. So you've been the one who's done this. So Merry Christmas. Thank you. You are wonderful. Yeah, you're all wonderful too. Thank you so much. <laughs> and good luck to everyone on the course as well. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Sally. Merry Christmas, Sally. You're awesome. And last but certainly not least, we have Mr. Joshua Strait. Woo! I can't. You, you still awake, Josh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm awake. <laughs> I'm awake. Just about. <laughs> Been up for eighteen hours, so I am hang hangry. Hangry is a word. Great, great word. So I'm going to start on a slightly negative question, and I'm going to end on a more positive one. So coming home to kind of be the eh today. Uh, so it's my neighbour who. Um, she was kind of bragging about how she bought another house and she's renting it out and it kind of vexed me and obviously 90% of the people on this call don't know me but I'm usually quite positive and happy now I was just like I'm so happy for you and in my head I went every single swear word I could think of because I'm like everybody under 30 can't do what you're doing so like like bulk buying houses and then renting them for the eternal rent market and um kind of spoke this to my few friends and said, how, how do you feel about this? And we all feel really frustrated about it. And I'm getting to that point in my life where I want to be a father. I want to be able to have my own space and not live with family. I love my family, but I need my own space. And um, like, I don't want to, you know, work from home in my, in my own room. I want to have a, you know, an office. Um, so yeah, I wanted to ask the first question as to what would you say to anyone under 30 that has that kind of irritation that like either you're renting and obviously the cost of living is making it higher or you have to just live with family and I feel like and I'm, I'm privileged to say that I, my savings didn't get obliterated during COVID and I'm going into um, great opportunities coming to next year but I just feel like no matter how much money I make the cost of living and the cost of housing just increases and I, I often kind of feel a, bit, a lot of irritation um, when I hear people that are older than me saying, well, it was already hard in our time when houses were like £10,000. And I'm like, That's, that must be so hard when houses on my street are £1 million. It must be so hard. So, yeah, so that's my kind of negative, irritating question I want to put out there. And I'll save the positive one for after your, um, your feedback. <laughs> Do you, it sounds like the assumption is that you have to buy a place. Why do you think I want to challenge that assumption? We, we want, we're thinking about renting. Um, okay. But we keep talking to our friends and they're like, yeah, our landlord just boosted, up, like just added 200, 400, 500 to our, um, to our bills. And I'm just like, I don't want that. 
<clears throat> I don't want to be like, okay, right, we've got enough money to kind of, we've put our money together, right, this is how much we're going to pay. And then all of a sudden, we have to pay an extra £400 more. And I feel like it just, it feels like a loss loss and it's irritating. So, yeah. Well, I think Katie and I could have a massive rant over the fact that uh, there's a huge story that owning your own house is always the best way to go. And money spent on rent is throwing it away. And we can have a massive rant about that, which we'll do another time. Katie and I currently own nothing with keys. And we are so excited that we own nothing with keys. No houses, no cars, no nothing. Um, And we're free to live life the way we want to live. And if we don't like somewhere, we can move somewhere else. And we did the sums on our Basingstoke flat that we lived in for 10 years over whether we'd be better off renting versus buying. And like, it was pretty much the same. I think there was about nine grand in it, whether we rented or bought over 10 years. And it's not always best to buy and it's not always best to rent. It depends who you rent from. It depends where you buy. Uh, There's all sorts of different things. So like, I think like skip the assumptions skip the stories like let's stop telling ourselves that everyone under 30 is screwed yeah the age thing like that yeah that's another that sells newspapers right it's not real in every case the narrative you know and then let's focus on your world and creating your world the way you want it so i would be like okay forget everyone else in the nicest possible world, I don't care about them. How do we raise Joshua's income so that he earns more and is able to afford what he wants and how he wants to live and saving? That's what we need to do. Forget all the stories. Forget everything else. Let's focus on you and what you are doing. And let's focus on you earning your way to where you want to be. Because it is possible for someone your age to earn really good money and create the life they want to. It is possible. So let's work on that. I know it's possible. And let's focus on that. And maybe you don't think it is. Maybe you truly believe everyone under 30 is screwed and there's no hope, which then just give up and just stop torturing yourself and live at home and be happy with your in-laws. Until you're 31 and then everything's possible after that. Yeah, then you're fine. (laughs) I, I do my best, um, but yeah, it's it's. I guess yeah, I guess it's a story. But yeah, everyone, everyone I know, all my friends on the age of thirty, we all had the same issue. So, You're um, hanging out with the wrong people. You're hanging out with the wrong people. You become the sum of the five people around you. If everyone you know has never been able to afford a house, why don't you find under thirty year olds who have, and hang out with people who have achieved what you want to achieve? I bet you there are people in the country under 30 who own a house. Or if they don't, ask them why and are they happy with their situation? Like, you're in a bubble of confirmation bias where the bubble of people around you is confirming your story and trapping you. There are people out there who have managed to do it. And maybe they're not in your area, in your network, but they exist. Yeah. I'll I'll keep an eye. Mm. That's <laughs> yeah. That's a like. like I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. That's code for sharp, Alan. Sharp, Alan. <laughs> I don't believe it's you, but I'll pretend like, that I'm going. To. <laughs> mm-hmm. My 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 thought was, where am I going to find these magical unicorns? Um, so in my head, I was like, okay, I'll just I'll just go and look. Um, yeah, it just if you're looking it just for seems magical like... unicorns, Josh, you're going to struggle to find them. You know what I mean? He's already. Yeah, yeah. Asking this group, asking the financial independence group, find the people who've done it, ask people who've achieved what you want to achieve and let's start working on it. But I think the more you engage in the story of it's impossible for anyone under 30, the more you will be trapped. Yeah, reading some of these comments is quite interesting. Um, Some confirmation bias, some interesting ideas. Someone called Harriet said, talk to your neighbour and ask her how she keeps buying the houses and flats. I'll do that when I'm in one of my good moods. (laughs) How old Um, are you, Josh? Hmm? How Um, old are you? 28. Oh, so like Simon said, you've only got two years to wait and then it will all be possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I'm yeah. 
just gonna keep a positive mental attitude and um go reach out to my people on LinkedIn and um yeah, see how it goes. For the more positive question, thank you very much. Um <clears throat> me and a friend decided to start a business and due to unforeseen circumstances, he was gonna be like the CTO, I was gonna be more like um kind of like CA CEO and sales, but he due to unforeseen circumstances, um couldn't do it. So in my head, I'm like how do I go about finding someone as brilliant as my buddy? I'm going to call, let's call him D. <clears throat> so how would you, so for example, if Simon could no longer do Rebel, how would you go about finding an, another amazing Simon? How would I go about finding an amazing Simon? Doesn't exist, found- my friend. Does yeah. not exist. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I've got a thought I'm going to put in the chat. What do you think, Al? Well, I was just going to say, like, you're looking for someone who's good with technical skills that wants to buy in your existing idea, mm. um, which that's one way to do it. The same and I, Simon and I always have is people support what they co-create. So I'd be like, how can I find cool people with technical skills and start to talk to them about their dreams? And one of the ideas is this thing that you've got that you want to make it happen um but start broader finding the people with the skills rather than going straight in with i need a person to make my vision come real uh you're going to be cto because i've just dropped the deal or like it changed and i just need to replace it like people support what they co-create and i know it's starting again from the beginning but maybe you'll create something even better than what you would have done with this other person Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, because my friend, like, he's still involved. Like you said, listen, I'm happy to have advice on the side, but it's just like, it's just gone so hectic. And he, he said to me, literally, like, I'm going to write down, like, a job description of, like, everything they should be able to do so you can at least have someone that has my skill set. But, yeah, it, it does feel like I've kind of had to start from scratch. It's almost like snakes and ladders where you hit the snake at 99 and you're back at, like, 15. And I'm like, oh, you're doing so well. And, again, no, like, love lost with him. I love him, like, family, but... Yeah, it's so sort of annoyed. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to find these people to go LinkedIn, Instagram. Hey, Joshua, I, I heard a whole bunch of story there, my friend. <laughs> and I'm just pointing to, <clears throat> there ain't no snakes and ladders. And in fact, you know, who's, who's to say what would happen? Like, you could have been six months down the road and this guy turned out to be a nightmare. Like, you might have dodged a bullet. You might have... You might have actually jumped onto a different board game, like uh, uh, Snakes and Ladders for, for other people. You're just about to play Rocket Business Inc. game. <laughs> and like, I've just stuck a link in the chat. Um, there's a co-founders lab. They're all about, it's like a dating service for for, for founders and co-founders to find each other. You, you're not that far away from a whole bunch of tech places where you could be networking the hell out of this stuff. Like if you tell yourself the story that you've taken one step forward and 20 backwards, or you've gone from stage 99 to 15, like your mojo for actually wanting to take that action starts to dip before you've even got out the door. Right. But if you told yourself, actually, I'm only one conversation away from finding my dream business partner. Like to me that straight away, a reframe makes me want to get up in the morning. You know what I mean? Mm. So I think like for me, take a deep breath, lick your wounds get out there and go like my friend you have got the gift of the gab but you could go and you could go and pitch to anybody tomorrow and it could unlock a whole new set of conversations right by first like you've been up for 18 hours suddenly the world looks a lot rosier when you've had a decent sleep sleep yeah i feel like a panda right now <laughs> you rock josh um thank you very much because i've been trying to kind of keep up to that keep up to date with the waffling brain fog yeah with everyone that's been putting some really amazing comments and stuff so thank you very much appreciate that and thank you for the course as well joshua sorry i hope you're not um looking to buy one of those million pound houses in your first purchase absolutely not my god hell no um (laughs) just checking because we've moved probably four times and I know Katie and Alan, you'll go tisk tisk. You own your house. I I love owning my house. It's, it's just that's just my thing. We love having our home. And it, it was a flat, then it was a semi-detached, 
Uh, and then now we have our house. And now we're at the point where I think we're done now. I never want to move again. Um, but, you know, there's a, there's lots of ways. And especially if you have your partner, you know, I, I hope you've looked at all government schemes and everything that if that is the way you want to go, you can, you know, just maybe go for a really cheap house, start on the ladder somewhere. Yeah, um, a lot of friends of us, ours have decided to either me and my partner go and buy like the cheapest thing possible, or we all buy a big thing and we all like five or six of us kind of all contribute to the pot. And it's almost like a flat share where everyone knows each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, we have kind of been looking at some of the government schemes and the, the Tories are just pulling them, pulling them from the rug now. So everything they've yeah. kind of been promising over the past X amount of years are now kind of saying, oh, sorry, we're going to cancel it. And um, yeah, it's just like, Keeping a positive mental attitude. So yeah. Good. Katie, sorry. I just wanted to say we're not anti buying a home. I know. We I'm are joking. we are pro consciously <laughs> choosing if that's what you want and not just blindly following the plan that someone else has laid out for you. So if you mm. want to own your own home, great. If it means if it makes more financial sense to rent and yet you still want to own your own home great but know what it's costing you and go into it with your eyes open so it's just consciously knowing and knowing the numbers and choosing what you want not just going oh i'm supposed to buy a house now i'm 28 you don't have to and that's why we fight against it is because there are such strong stories in the world that renting is throwing away money etc etc that we just need to stand up to that crap because it's not always true you can actually do the numbers and think for yourself and that's all we ever want anyone to do is do the numbers and work out what's best for them uh, and then know what you're buying don't care which one it is but we stand up strongly because the rhetoric is so strong in the press and the british culture that it does need standing up to no completely agree i was only pulling you <laughs> well, you touched the nerve, Anita. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I sense that. I was like, ooh, they really, I could feel, see your body. <laughs> and Alan, I should say, pulled your arm because I hope your arm was clean when you just licked it. I think you pretend licked, didn't you? No, Did you I pretend? didn't. It was quite salty. Oh. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. Hope it was Thank clean. you, Josh. Thanks, I Josh. Guess, Thank you. Thank you, Josh. I guess, like, the final thought on this stuff about that is there is such strong stories about what success is in modern culture that success is a solid job success is owning your home success is this success is that i i don't want you to have to conform that i want you to choose what your version of success is and play your own game uh, because I, by traditional measures of success, Katie and I don't have a job or a house or kids or pets or a car. Or even plants. I think or that plants. Fake. It is fake. <laughs> we don't have any of that stuff. So by any traditional measure of success, we are homeless, unemployed people bumbling around the world. But I'm quite happy. I'm incredibly happy. So I just want to say to you, like, choose your own version of success. And go for what you want. You don't have to live up to what anyone else says success is. That's the whole purpose of this course. Choose your version of extraordinary and go make it happen for you. And I don't care whether that's living in a six bed house or living in a tent in a field. What makes you happy is the most important thing. Can I, can I raise my hand and say a thank you as well from Dan and I? Yes. On your behalf. But you're absolutely right. <laughs> Thank you okay. last week. Um, um, extraordinary, extraordinary. Thank you very much for your, for your generosity, all three of you. And a and, uh, really big thank you because I have done the journey from the finance school to the business school to now the extraordinary. And it's exactly what you said. It's just putting things in perspective of your life. And I, there's still areas like where I need to go out of my comfort zone. Like we just discussed my whole thing with social media. Nobody would even think it, but for some reason I hate posting. Like you meet me at a networking event, talk to me. 
like different person but then you asked me to do some posting and shout from a rooftop on social media and LinkedIn I'm like no I mean if you saw my LinkedIn it's there and they're like people think we wouldn't think that of you Anita, after talking to you I'm like no so Dan's like we need to work on this and get your posts up but so the thing's definitely to work on and I think exactly what you said what I've realized from all your courses it's about being conscious about yourself and really just holding yourself up to your own accountabilities and, and the whole thing of marriage and the things you need to do when the things that I was raised as expectations, it was to please others and uh, as opposed to myself. And that took a long time. So thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. I can't wait until the next course. Uh, I'm, I could tear up right now just probably because I'm just deliriously tired or <laughs> some type of hunger because all I'm thinking about is that you guys get to go out and eat tacos and I'm still thinking about burritos, not the tofu ones. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure as always. Thanks, Anita. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, Dan. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Simon, any, Katie, anything to say at the end? No, I think you nailed it. Yeah, I think like the, just as Anita was talking, the, the thought that popped in my head was we do give ourselves a bit of a hard time for what we either aren't doing or we feel like we're not doing very well, probably because we're used to being a big hitter in a previous role or a pe previous version of ourselves. And, and I'm like to myself, I'm thinking, well, no wonder, no wonder that you're finding that hard because that's new. It's a new skill. It's a new action you know figuring out how to buy a house figuring out how to handle a difficult ex figuring out how to post regularly on linkedin these are new things and you know we can give ourselves a bit of a break and go you yeah. know it's all right kiddo keep going and i kind of like that and i think I've, I've hit myself with sticks a few times going no you should have done that more you should have been better at that you should have done this you should have done that pineapple thing you know be kind to yourselves be kind to yourselves i love it i got something actually oh. that sparked a thought katie donegan and then we will the let wind. people go to bed <laughs> or eat tacos um as simon was talking it made me think of the thing that i discovered this week and that um i need to stand up for myself more and Anytime I encounter a bully in my life, what I normally do is go, oh, yes, yes, you're right. OK, I'm terribly sorry. And then I realized that the biggest bully is residing in my head and um, is really mean, really, really mean. And I've started to catch it now. I, I stepped on the scales this morning and I was like 0.1 kilo heavier than I was yesterday. And my brain said fat bitch. And I was like, what? Wow. I was like. Um, no, if thank anyone you. Anyone else spoke <laughs> to my wife that way, I would destroy like, them. Where did that come from? And then it's just like I'm, I'm choosing to stand up to the bully that lives in my head, and uh, that's something that I will be, um, doing from now on. So if you have a bully in your head, don't let them win. Stand up to them, and be kind to yourself. Good summary. <laughs> and on that note uh thank you everyone for coming to the course uh have a wonderful festive period christmas if you celebrate it whatever you want to do just have a wonderful time be kind to yourself that includes you tony even and tony. even tony needs to be <laughs> kind to himself and thank you so much for coming to the course the only thing we ask in return is fill out the feedback form <laughs> <laughs> no go create your life the way you want it thank you for coming good night we're going to go and eat all the food uh tracy white please stop flashing us thank you so much for coming good night everyone good night kerry good night karen good night erin bye everyone thank oh, you for just coming you in the you face with my excessive face. waving bye sally <laughs> man it's dangerous being here <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
People are still, still here. Haven't you got homes I love to go? You're waving, Nisa. Bye, Tofu Alan. Oh, welcome, Alan. Andy, welcome. David Young's here. Shall we let the YouTubers go? Hi, David. Yes, YouTube does not need to see us waving goodbye to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, Bye, YouTubers. YouTube. Love you.